what is going down, y'all? Welcome in the most underrated podcast. I am Thomas the Franchise. Dal Palantonio sitting across from me. JJ here at the end of the table, broadcasting from Certified Tattoo Studios. You already know how it goes down, man. Feels good to be back on a Monday. Our normal uh, schedule, you guys are finding this probably on a Tuesday. But nonetheless, man, we are back. National Championship game going down tonight. Uh, we probably won't talk too much about that because of the... Um, the uh, the the game will already be over by the Correct. time you guys are probably hearing this podcast. So even though it's a big topic, it's not going to probably be a huge topic for us uh, here on this show. You know, I'm, yeah, why I came in with this intro music? Take a guess. No, I don't. Really? I don't. Is it post? Is it Post Malone's anniversary? <laughs> <laughs> no, no? I, I probably would have just played Post Malone. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> it's it's for this my man uh, Cody Parkey, Mr. Ah, Postman. Ah, you know good I mean? one. Yeah, thanks. Damn. Yeah. Had to uh, just had to hit him with a little light roast there. Little, yeah. Some planners, you know what I'm saying? A little light roast. But uh, nonetheless, man, how was your weekend, Dal? How you doing? Actually, fuck you for a second, Dal. Cool. Uh, JJ, welcome back. Yeah. How's I'm sorry. I, I, that was a false alarm. <laughs> that was rude. And not, not fuck you. That was rude. That was good. God, just starting to start off the show bad. I'm sorry. Uh, JJ. Skiing last weekend. How were the slopes was, up in the Colorado mountains? So I went up to Copper Mountain for my first time and everything, and it was pretty good, not going to lie. Mm. It was busy as fuck because it was Christmas break still, even though it was in the middle of the fucking week. So yeah. that sort of sucked, but we found some runs that were a bit like uh, not as busy, but it was good. I liked it for my first time. Um, Wait, so it was your first time skiing? No, ever? Copper just Copper Mountain. Oh, just at Copper Mountain. Just at Copper, and yeah. I just want to make sure I understand. My first time skiing... Because I've skied like over maybe seven, eight years. Okay. But um, yeah, it was my first time this year and first time at Copper Mountain. Copper. So that was huge. But yeah, it was nice. It was cool. Like late, I won't lie, later into the day, we started going higher and higher up in the mountain. We like reached the peak at one point. And man, it was a fucking ice rink up there. Oh, that yeah, was I bet. some scary shit. I bet. Like Dude, it was like, when you get there was no stopping. You just. Hope to God you get down the fucking mountain at that rate. Like. Right. You get when you get so high up there, you can get really exposed and wind whipped. So it can get really wind whipped up there, and uh, man, it, it just so blows all the powder cold, off. Too. So you have just that that ice layer. Oh know? yeah, was it freezing up there too? It was. It was like other than like the peak, it was actually pretty good. It wasn't too bad. It was like at one point I felt like I could take my hoodie off. Like oh yeah, yeah, extremely Dope. warm. Yeah. I usually don't. Um, I usually don't hit it until. Mid to end of January for the first time. Sure. Uh, very rare do I go Why? skiing before the new year. Um, I just find I get better skiing in, especially for me, a guy that doesn't buy a pass. I just can't spend that fucking mo- that kind of money to have weak snow. Yeah. I need it to be fucking fire if I'm spending sure. upwards of $179 for one time. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, if I'm not yeah. a guy that uh, I thought about buying a four pass a couple times this year, didn't pull the trigger on it. I just ended up being too expensive. It was like Dude, um, that's 200 and some way. dollars. That's the, ba- the best way to do it because one pass is like 150 yeah. minimum now. Yep. That's what we were talking about. Uh, the, the rates to go skiing here in Colorado just got oh, so yeah. stupid. And I was talking to some people on the lift and they said they got a news alert that said Vail's ski pass was like 202 or yeah, something like I saw that. that. It, it was over insane. $200 for Vail, dude. For really? a day. Fucking nuts, yeah. You have been, you've been up yet, Dal? I haven't been up yet. No. And no. you have your pass. Or you have four pass, right? I No, I have the... Uh, oh, mid, that's right. The week, week. The midweek pass. That's yeah. right. Yeah. For th- for, it was, what, $300, I think is what it is. Yeah. Uh, unlimited so uh, skiing cheap. Monday through Friday. No, no blackouts. But it is Loveland. So it's one of the, I would say, one of the smaller resorts. And in terms of like cool resorts, it, yeah. it's not. You know, you look, <laughs> you, you look at Copper, you look at Breck, you look at, you know, uh, you know, even a basin is pretty cool for as small as it is, but now this is just a basic bitch pass, uh, but it's cool. It allows me to do it Monday through Friday. Cause then I don't have to work on, or, you know, I don't do anything on weekends because the lines suck. We've addressed it before. Yep. Uh, it just makes dollars and cents to me. No but, doubt. But I, I'm, I'm with you, man. Early, early conditions. Not for me. You know, I, I want there to be a substantial base and the base is de- decent. I think it's like just under 40 inch base now. Mm-hmm. So it's decent in most of our mountains, but, uh, yeah, January into February and then into spring skiing. That's, that's kind of where it's at for me. Depen- well. Yeah. Depending on what happens in March, some years, March is great. Some years, March is terrible. Trash. You know what I mean? It just depends. But, uh, mid January through February is always dope to me. Mm-hmm. I always have a good time. It's never, uh, you get good sunshine. Weather's good. It's not too icy. Mm-hmm. Um, occasionally you'll get some, you'll get some crazy powder days and some bl- uh, blizzard conditions sure and I, I guess almost if you're lucky right that's like a you're, you're hoping that's for that a miracle so, man. that yeah. lotto that lotto ticket yeah exactly but uh as we roll on to the show man um 
let's let's jump in and talk a little bit about uh, our weekends. We got a lot of stuff. Obviously, Wild Card Weekend, the DraftKings tournaments, some sneaker releases. Uh, we got some pickups from this week. We'll go over with you guys the changes to Stock X and their policies for mm-hmm. the New Year's. We'll talk about that. Also, we'll hit on the uh, YouTube comments. We missed them last show because we were just too jam packed. Uh, didn't have enough time, so we're gonna go back and go through both uh, YouTube comments from the last two podcast or. Um, yeah, the last two podcasts. podcasts. So we'll do that. Uh, how was your weekend, Dal? Did you do anything fun? Um, uh, anything unexpected, or was it just was it just basic shit? Just getting into 2019. Yeah, just basic shit. Uh, I've got some uh, some changes happening at, at my workplace, mm. uh, possibly this week. I uh, got some new hires. Got some, you know, just building a, a, a bench, right, a roster. So just uh, making some big changes for 2019 with that. Um, outside of that, dude. You know, wild card weekend, dog. Yep. Let me just tell you, it was football heavy again. Of course. I had the, uh, you know, my neck has been fucking killing me, dude. Dude, the Airbnb, um, the hard bed, bro. the hard bed, the hard pillow. I think it, I think it honestly was a mix of being sick, then getting over that, then yeah. getting another cold from you, probably. Yeah. Getting I, sick again. I regave you the new version. Yeah, like something else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I had two kind of different sicknesses I was fighting off. Then we do the hit the Airbnb. Yeah. So I had like a kind of just a lingering little headache before then, um, before the Airbnb. After the Airbnb, it fucked up my neck so bad. I've been having these tension headaches for like the past week. I've been trying to like massage it and trying to do all this shit. Yeah. Um, some days I'll wake up feeling better than others. Some days I'll wake up feeling like, oh, I'm good. And then halfway through, the day it'll reemerge or later in the day um so i got the uh i got some of the cbd oil from you i hit you up on twitter i was like dal you're advertising this (laughs) cbd oil we got a new sponsorship here at the uh the most underrated podcast which i'll let you talk about in a second sure but i picked up some of the cbd oil from you pure spectrum cbd oil and uh Mm -hmm. fire on the neck dude yeah yeah my girl like massage it rub it in really really good and um i woke up yesterday feeling the best I've felt since that since that sleep at the Airbnb, if you even want to call it a sleep, uh, <laughs> right? fucking that, that night, uh, I woke up Quick feeling nap. so good yesterday. Yeah, I, dude, I, I woke up feeling like the man. Bro. Yeah. I mean, uh, I wish I had my some music aloe right black, now. dude. I felt like I, I felt like the man. I was. I was feeling, I was floating around the uh, kitchen. I was like looking around at shit. I didn't even need to be looking yeah. at. I was just turning around for no reason. Just fucking, cause I ain't been able to do that shit in a minute. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just woo, woo. Cat Williams on a motherfucker. So shit was tight. Um, so, shit uh, worked really, really well, dude. I can actually see you fucking risky business in it right now. <laughs> yeah, with, exactly. with fucking Tom Cruise, yep. with your Nike Air Mag fucking you knit know it. slippers, You dog. know it. I can running, fucking see it. All right. Running, sliding through the motherfucking kitchen, whipping the neck real quick, <laughs> whip it good like I'm Devo and shit. That's what's up. Um, yeah, dude, it's awesome. Awesome fucking product, dude. Nice. It helped my neck so much. Um, I can't even explain. Just yeah. super, super dope. But I'm happy to uh, officially announce the the sponsorship with Pure, Pure Spectrum CBD on this podcast. You bet, man. Yeah, so a little bit about Pure Spectrum. Uh, so one of my sisters, actually, or my sister is actually one of the f- uh, main founders of this company. Mm. So they've been doing it uh, since uh, 2014, I believe, is when uh, the CEO, uh, Brady Bell, got invested into the CBD. So they have kind of came up in the, the weed industry, the pot industry, you know, in Denver, um, and kind of learned how to run businesses. Um, do all these little pop-ups and then found CBD as, you know, an alternate form of just healing versus like the prescription meds Dude, and the everyone's, ibuprofen. Not everyone, but I should say our country is taking a big step towards this alternative medicine. I, I agree. There's just a lot of people that don't, um, that don't believe in doctors, not necessarily doctors, but pharmaceuticals yeah, and vaccines. all the stuff that doctors prescri- uh, prescribe. Yeah. There's a lot of... De- um, there's some really good documentaries out there that are kind of exposing mm-hmm. the industry yeah. for uh, how dirty game, and grimy man. it is. And, it yep, is. The Who's money. in whose pockets, that kind of thing. You yep. know, um, you know, you need to sell this many of this product and this many. It, dude, it's a business. It's so scary because these are pe- this is people's health. Yeah. And uh, you're just giving out shit to hit numbers. We're trusting our lives with right. these fools. Right. You know? It honestly, uh, dude, it's... It's capitalism. It's America. It is. I mean, it's it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, they're going to capitalize on anything they can to make money. Money is always ruled. Money will always rule. Uh, money and sex are fucking undefeated. Those yeah. are the two things, dude. Just <laughs> those are the two things that make people do some shit that they probably never would have done yeah. or never even would have considered if there wasn't a substantial gain financially or sexually. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those are just two things in this country that are so fucking undefeated, and it sucks because. They've been uh, exposed and taken advantage of, and there's, you know, uh, you're exploiting people's health to make money. I, I feel I just find something wrong with that. Yeah. And so with this, with something like this, with CBD, with alternative medicine, uh, everything is starting to go in a different direction, dude. Yeah. Things are starting to really flow in a different direction. And uh, actually, I'll get into a little bit more of that in a second. I'll kind of tell you what um, 
my girl and I have kind of made a little decision over the weekend. So I'll really? kind of get into that. All right. But uh, just to finish on the oil, it was so simple because it was like a cream. I just rubbed mm-hmm. it on my neck. You, uh, It came in a vape pen form. It comes in a couple different forms, yeah. however you a want to use it. A tincture where you can actually like an eyedropper that you would yeah. drop into into your mouth orally, yep. uh, which is what I do because that kind of goes into the stream pretty quick. But if you have a topical rub on, that's obviously going to go right to the area that, you know, that is bothering you, you know. Uh, so arthritic conditions, you know, certain pains, ailments, um, you know, headaches. Uh, my lady actually uses it for her uh, cramps that she gets, you know, yeah, when it's yeah, her time yeah. of the Period, month, yeah. that kind of thing. Dude, great great savior for that for sure nice. so you know so the testimonials are out there it's good stuff um, I try to use it once or twice a day either by tincture or just rub on if there's a small headache or whatever but the great thing is it's fully organic and there is zero I mean zero THC yeah, yeah so yeah. I wasn't like this, getting high from it yeah so this company pure spectrum so they they have um, a lot of UFC fighters that they're promoting now um, that are affiliates for them they have uh, people that are retired uh, football players the CTE stuff so they're obviously still doing a bunch of research to find out what works and what doesn't um, but uh, if we know anything about professional sports you cannot mess with weed. If you get tested, you are out. You will be suspended. You, this is not a part of the game. And these tests, either USADA or whoever it is, you know, with UFC or, or football, they take this stuff very, very serious. Of so course, yeah. um, it's nice to have a holistic program, something good, something organic, something natural um, that, you know, you don't have to worry about not passing tests, anything like that. You're doing the right thing for the bodies, man. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of this. This growth is huge. This company is out of Evergreen, so locally here, Evergreen, Colorado. So literally we can walk into their office, have consultations, talk about business. Um, They're right in our backyard, which is really, really nice. So if you have questions, please, you know, call them, text them, whatever you need to do. Dude, they're really great. Um, They're they're almost nerdy. They're they're nerdy about this shit, you know? The cool thing about this stuff too is this can be used, I mean, like you said, simple headaches uh, instead of taking Advil. You know what I mean? Um, We know obviously with uh, different pain medications they're not good for your liver this is not you know what i mean they may take take your headache away or whatever but it's not good for it's not good for your body liver or kidneys right if it's ibuprofen it's kidneys i think and then if it's tylenol it's liver you've got issues with all this also i thought it was your stomach lining too that it destroyed yeah 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 Yeah. 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 either way so um but this is an alternative for that like i said whether it's a simple headache whether it's just something where you're a little bit stressed out and high strung and you just need to relax anxiety anxiety perfect perfect for that shit dude this is uh this is awesome stuff like i said i'm so i'm so proud to be partnered with it with this partnership you guys get 10 percent off so if this is something that you guys want to get completely legal uh just a pain uh, management alternative or a mm-hmm. stress or a relaxation kind of alternative um pure spectrum cbd you can find it at the on the website yep and then you can enter our code mup you got it and it's all it'll all be in the description on the youtube uh channel so if you want to check that out man pure spectrum cbd uh get yourself some of it. it's great for a ton of different uses for you your lady your family uh any of that stuff it's it's awesome man yeah um great. now moving in to another uh this is kind of health and wellness as well dude. all right this is a big fucking step now you this, know is, me. this is you and mia yeah it's me, yeah. me and my lady cool. you know this shit dude you know how fucking uh you know how you know how I am. You know me. I'm not a guy that ever in my life would have thought about probably going vegan or vegetarian or any of this shit, right? right. I'm a meat guy. I fucking love meat. Dude. Sure. But isn't the simple similar uh along the health lines as far as the CBD stuff and everything there, we're getting more and more information about things and me and my girl have had some weird experiences with the meat lately. Okay. Uh whether it's been certain ground beefs we bought that were just you just taste I don't know. Just something is different in it. Whether it's certain little, I don't know what it is, dude. But um, have you ever? I, I I hate even like promoting shit that we're not sponsored by. But have right. you ever heard of a company called Beyond Meat? Uh uh-uh. Dude, it's this. It's this. Uh, it's this company. They're kind of leading the charge as far as plant based proteins. All it is is like uh, it was created by this vegan guy. I'm not saying I'm going vegan. I'm sure. not saying I'm even going vegetarian. Yeah. Vegetarian is probably the way I would lean. Vegan's a little too crazy for me. I just don't yeah. know if I can do it. I'm not disciplined enough. You That's know, for tough, me. for sure. Um, but vegan really, in, or uh, vegetarian really interests me from a standpoint as far as just burgers and things that I would eat that are normally meat. This this Beyond Meat, dude, they sell it at like Whole Foods and like your, your normal grocery stores. Mm-hmm. So fire, dude. Really? Uh, I would encourage you. It's funny because Carl's Jr. just partnered with them. And it's called the Beyond Famous Star Burger, and it's Beyond Meat Patty. So like it's White Castle. It's it's oh, are they doing the same kind of shit? They did that before with Beyond Meat. 
They had the was unbelievable a burger. I don't know where oh, they were probably, getting it, probably but something it was different. like the same thing. It was like it was supposed to taste the same way as an actual burger, but it wasn't a burger. So, gotcha. so this isn't meat, obviously. So right. you say plant-based proteins. Yep. Uh, yep. Beans? So it's... it's uh, Legumes? I, <laughs> no, it's a... Um, it's a it is a type of bean, okay, and uh, it is a type of bean and different greens kind of mixed up together that create this. But it gives you the appearance of meat. It tastes like meat when you eat it. And in my mind, I'm like, why would I ever again just have a regular burger? Or like they have chicken alternates. Like obviously it's not chicken, but like if you're making chicken tacos at the crib or whatever. For me, it's like I've come. To, I'm coming to the point where I'm looking at meat and I'm like. And my dad, just talking to my dad and my dad being a owning and heating an air conditioning company, having to go into these plants and fix these things and work on these machines. And he's like, having him just talk to me about like, dude, it's fucking, if you see that shit and how it's actually done, it's fucking pretty wild. Yeah. Like, um, my dad's not a vegetarian or vegan or anything. He still eats meat, but he said it'll alter the way you think about things for sure. And just having that talk with him over the holidays, uh, our experiences, like I said, we've gotten some bad kind of, not bad meat, but just kind of sketchy meat lately. Meat is just weird as fuck. Let's be real. Like, it's just kind of a weird fucking thing, dude. It's not, uh, you have stuff that, uh, you know, like you talk about the mad cow disease back in the day over in Europe and the UK and how that's kind of swept the country, how scary that shit actually is. Like how many cows are out there? How many, how easy is this shit? How easy your diseases? Like mm-hmm. we're getting pumped full of this meat that they're pumping full of shit. That's putting cancer cells into our body, whether it turns into cancer or not. I don't know, but yeah. it's just like, man, if I can do something about it, if I can do a little something to eat a little bit better or uh, do something that my whole thing was, I still want it to be enjoyable. And that burger was fucking enjoyable. Was like, it? dude, go check it out. I encourage you to check it out. Carl's Jr. It's, if you're skeptical, it's fucking great. So then when we did more research on it, uh, we ate the burgers and we were like, wow, this is awesome. And we did more research on it, went to, you know, the Beyond Meat website and looked it all up and shit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, this is pretty fucking cool. And they're about to go public pretty soon too. So if you're in the stock game, I know I'm definitely going to be, in on stocks because they're really? going to make a big dent in the fucking meat market, dude. There's no way that people are not going to, uh, they're just doing such a good job with the product that it's like, if you don't have to eat fucking meat or eat something that could be questionable for you, why would you, you know what I mean? Right. Now I'm not going to say I'm going to give up meat forever. I still love, I'm still may go get some pork chops at fucking cheesecake factory when I'm out. Just cause I love their pork chops. That's one of my favorite uh, dishes there at cheesecake factory. Like totally. I, they just, those pork chops dude, are fire. They put the applesauce underneath. It's oh, yeah. just so fire. Um, if you ever, if you haven't had that, check that out at at a a cheesecake factory, but I probably, I don't think I'll just go get like a Whopper anymore. Like I just don't feel the need almost, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe in a pinch, maybe if I'm super fucking hungry, uh, you know, fast food restaurant or whatever, but I'm kind of leaning towards vegetarian, but not full on maybe like what they call flexitarian. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's kind of a, a new thing, I guess. People are kind of just flexing it's their like options the a little bit more in between essentially. Yeah. 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 You're not full on fucking vegetarian, sure. but um, you're not full on meat eater. You know yeah. what I mean? It's kind of in the middle. And for me personally, if I can do a little bit of something that I think is going to be, it, it doesn't taste bad, actually tastes really good. And it's going to be a little bit better for me. Why not? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of uh, an alternative, alternative for whatever. There's probably a better alternative to this. You know what I mean? Like sure. as I'm getting a little bit older, I'm just saying this is something that I kind of had, not necessarily an epiphany, but, we kind of had this um, thought process and we kind of just decided to take a step into that. So, which is for me, that's super interesting Yeah. because I don't, I'm that's not, a, that's uh, a big jump for you. I'm not that kind of guy. Yeah, like, for sure. I'm just not, I'm a fucking carnivore meeting motherfucker, you yeah. know, but it's just, um, as shit gets increasingly more and more weird, like we're sitting at Buffalo wild wing or, uh, we're talking about Buffalo wild wings and my girl and she's like, you, know, you ever think how, how many, like how many fucking chickens can there be? How many wings can there really fucking be on these chickens? Like, are they, you know, what are they injecting them with to grow extra fucking wings? And right. then to, you know what I mean? Like, it's just almost gross. Like, do yeah. you think about it? You know what I mean? The genetically modified bullshit. You think about all that shit. There. It's, it's, it's like, real. It is because there's so many fucking people. So yeah. how do you feed all these fucking people or keep up with the demand unless you're doing some artificial shit? Right. Unless you're doing some shit that's not. It's, it, it is, it is weird. So I'll give you my little perspective here yeah, on this ahead. whole thing. I, I think you're right. I think, it, but, but life is balance. So if it, if it were I, and, and I was telling you what I think you should do, I think balance it out. Yeah, man, get a little exactly. bit of this and get a little bit of that. That's exactly I think where that's I'm okay at. because the bodies, if they've been used to something for so long, um, and then, then you just completely turn Cut it, it off, upside yeah. down, um, that can even cause issues. Yep. Um, you know, and I think that's, you know, part of the reason why Rob, Robin's kidney stone came up, uh, because she's made some drastic changes in a lot of different ways that are good things, but it was heavy and hard on the body. Um, that being said, 
I was a farmer, born and raised. Yeah, you know course, that. Of course. Uh, so coming from Southwest Kansas, um, you know these grocery stores, these pro- produce companies, whoever it was uh, that we were growing for at the time, um, they wanted things bigger. They wanted th- they wanted they wanted more color than the natural colors that it came in, and that genetically modified stuff is real, man. Like I was a witness to this, and I don't believe in it. I'm totally, totally against it. The whole Monsanto and all this other shit, man. But I, I lived it. I, I saw it because you had the people who were buying your product. They wanted it bigger, faster, stronger. They wanted it more colorful. They wanted it more appealing to what they thought the consumers wanted. So it's interesting to see this, and and I think we're in a world now where health is is obviously on the forefront, and I think for for damn good reason. And I'm I am bought into it a hundred percent. And we even look at meat, man. Meat takes so long to just digest. Digest, yeah. And right, right. and and that's not that's not good on your system. That's hard yeah. on your system, right? Uh, eventually, especially if you eat a lot of red meat, dog. That shit can be sitting in your system for weeks, no dog. Doubt. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, I, I I'm all in with this, and I think it's cool. I think, hey, hey, you're growing up, man. What's funny is I just turned 36 this year, and hell, I've only been 36 since December. But the last 35 and 36, um. Man, I've noticed some differences. You know, my digestion isn't as good as it once was. Of course, yeah. Uh, You know, my dehydration levels are are just off the chain. I'm working on that now. Still on water. uh, Still not drinking the energy drinks, which is really cool. I'm having like a soda a week just to have a little bit of- One soda per week only? One soda a week, man. Just to to have something like as a reward piece, right? If you're not giving yourself a reward when you're actually limiting yourself to something, I think you're doing something wrong. That's my opinion. To be honest, I'll say this because I- Personally, I love soda as, Do as you? a young kid I wouldn't and know everything. That. I didn't know that. Like, but after a while, after a while of just not drinking it, it's just like I forget about it. And I've never drink. I have. I haven't uh, had a soda in who knows how long now. Really? Good it's for just you. Something like. So you've yeah, obviously. I'm not saying okay. What I'm saying, I'm not saying stop what you're doing. I'm just saying, like, after a while, if you, like, accidentally stop doing it, eventually, Mm -hmm. it's like, fuck, I haven't had a soda in a long time. Well, I think after the first week, you said that. You said you had a soda, and you said it grossed you out. I had two drinks, and it was like, it was like, it felt like extra sugar. I was like, ooh, this is, you know, it's not good. Just like you taking a bite of meat. It's like, ooh, this just doesn't, I don't know, this doesn't taste right, or I'm not really feeling this. Same kind of a thing. But now I can have a soda, and that was a Dr. Pepper, and Dr. Pepper, man, so much sugar. Most sodas have a lot of sugar, right? But you can find sodas that have a little bit less sugar than a Mountain Dew or a Dr. Pepper pretty easily. So, you know, I found that, and that's kind of my reward piece, right? At the end of the week, maybe it's Sunday, right? Because Sunday's a great day where I can just kick my feet up, watch some football games. Eventually that'll stop here, but it's great to have a fucking soda so i'm working through it but um just to get back to this man you know i'm proud of you man and even if you don't take it serious but just thinking about things um as i'm 35 and 36 just a few years older than you i've already noticed that finally finally at 35 36 my body does not work like it used to and even till i was 34 35 is where i really started feeling it um i'm I'm making these choices as well and i and how dramatic am i and how dedicated am i i mean that fluctuates a little bit but i think to try to make decisions to to try to better yourself, whether it's CBD, whether it's eating better, whether it's exercising for fuck's sake. Um, It's a great time to do that. It's in the limelight. It's in the forefront of people's thinking. And um, 2019, Let's you get know, it. Yeah, and I'm never I'm not a huge fan of like, oh, I'm starting over this year. I never sure. really needed a fucking time yeah. clock or like a, a a starting marker. You know what I mean? I never needed right. like a fresh start or anything. I just kind of one one day just start, you yeah. know? Uh, so I'm never like that guy. And this isn't a 2019 thing for me. I'm not sure. Uh, nothing's changing as far as you know, hey, I'm gonna chant new year, new me type shit. It's just kind of <laughs> right. it's something that we just we've been thinking about for a minute. I've been thinking about for a minute, and it's right. kind of just I found a product that I'm happy with that's easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? That I can just, I can so, literally go buy that shit at the supermarket. The same spot I buy my ground beef to put in my spaghetti sauce. Yeah. I can just buy this shit, put it in my spaghetti sauce. Yeah. And it's all, it's all plant-based. It's, it's not tax. Tax. So where's, where's it at again? It's called Beyond Meat. They sell it at Whole Foods. They sell it at certain like Safeways and King Supers oh, yeah. and shit. But uh, I know everyone doesn't have those yeah. stores in their, in their area, but most people have like Whole Foods or Sprouts or some kind of natural sure. uh, yeah. grocers. But For all sure. the, if you, I mean, if you check out Beyond Meat on their web, if you search Beyond Meat and hit their website, they have a list of like retailers and shit. But I think it's a great again, choice I mean, because feel, it's not taxing you any more to get no, that than right, what it right. would be. And that's it's the really problem. much more than meat. When yeah. people make big decisions, like this, this is a big decision. Um, 
if you make a decision and it's so much harder to either find this meat or find this or find that or go get this, um, it's probably not going to work out. It's not sustainable usually yeah. unless you're really, really dedicated. So I think it's good, man. It's a gentle way of doing something better for Quest, you. Real quick question for you guys before we jump off this. Uh, do you think now um, this famous Beyond Famous star – the, with the Beyond Meat patty just came out. Like it's pretty new at Carl's Jr. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen advertising or anything for it. Um, I haven't. Uh, I did. That's where I, that's where I was like, oh shit, I'm gonna check this out. But um, do you think this would ch is gonna change the, the fast food, um, not necessarily the fast food industry, but do you think it's gonna change is this going to spawn more companies to do the same? Is McDonald's going to now come out with a, a vegan or ve vegetarian option or a non-meat option? Is Wendy's, is Burger King, you know what I mean? Are these other companies going to follow in the footsteps of Carl's Jr.? Or is this kind of a one-off thing where it's just going to be their thing? Are they going to even continue with it after this? What do you guys think? I mean, how do you think that's going to shake out? I think with uh, big box corporations, you know, it takes time to see how it does because um, it's all about numbers. So I think that's a big part of it. But uh McDonald's is already changing certain things. I went there here recently and they're actually, they're, they've changed their meats that they're using. Once again, I think they've done that multiple times uh, throughout the years. Yeah, it's but, actual grade A. Yeah, so they call it grade A meat. And do you know what they do actually? So they actually leave it pink in the middle just so you know that it was cooked fresh and that it's more of a, a higher grade meat did you know that i didn't even know that until here recently i asked the, no i idea. asked the fool at mcdonald's i'm I've like i've seen advertising i'm as like, far as like why is my shit pink it's never pink yeah and they're like well sir let me tell you we've changed the whole thing so i think not carl's jr is spawning something but i think there's a lot of companies already kind of transitioning into Pressure at least better quality yeah okay whatever that means um and i think they're doing it at the cheapest way possible because that's what co corporations do i mean you have to if you're yeah. charging six dollars for the meal you know what i mean yeah. like seven dollars for the value meal like you have to go totally. as cheap as you can go to increase profit margin but but yeah i mean i think but. um but i think yeah i think i think health is a big thing and i think uh these companies are kind of moving towards that and you know there's People aren't idiots anymore. We have so much at our fingertips, so much information, I mean. The and it's huge. Yeah, like you can find fucking anything. To look things up and to have these testimonials like we just gave on CBD. You know, we're just two basic dudes, you yeah, know, yeah, just yeah. talking about sports right. and things we love. Um, it's out there, and there's a lot of testimonials. There's a lot of uh, feedback. It's easy to get feedback. It's easy to give feedback. It's easy to see things. Um, yeah, I mean, I think whether it's Carl's Jr. or not, I think this does transition, and it's only going to evolve. I, I think... Go ahead. Honestly, if they get some influence influencers behind it, I feel like this is going to explode massively because, uh, um, like I said, White Castle, to my knowledge, was did like the similar. first do like the first restaurant who did it and mm -hmm. everything, but like. I don't think it will happen right away. Like Dallas said, it will take time, but it's as long as this health movement continues, this is going to be fucking huge. Like I'm honestly interested on uh, getting that same meat you did. Cause it's like, I'm like, I'm at the same position you are. I love meat and everything. I don't necessarily want to go vegan, but I have tried like or vegetarian. Plant, yeah. yeah. I would never, vegan's yeah. too crazy for me, but vegetarian. Like, I've even tried like plant, uh, plant based protein shakes and everything like that. So I've been trying to do that myself, especially and you're at a very in the young gym, age. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I could kind of like kick it off right essentially. Yeah. But yeah, I would, I feel like this is going to be fucking huge, especially because, uh, I don't know. Our food source can only go so far. Right. That's that's how, that's what I'm saying. I mean, there's only so many chickens. There's only so many cows. There's only so much shit. And the more and more shit. Unless uh, we have some fucking massive war, then. There's, you're right. It's, it's, uh, I don't know. Here's, here's my take on it. I don't know that it's going to, I think it's going to make an incredible dent in the meat industry as far as grocery stores and that stuff. As far as fast food, I don't think it's going to take off. Yeah. I, I think um, I'm, I'm really in the middle but I'm leaning towards not going to take off. Reason being, I, like you said, influencers, people getting behind it, all that they stuff. They need the right people behind that shit. It could like, make it explode. They're going to have to catch lightning in a bottle, though, and I'll tell you why. They're already behind the eight ball. You're fast food. You're not known for that. People that go to you don't go to you for that. People that are vegetarian are not are, um, are generally probably not going to getting a bunch of fast food all the time. You know what I mean? They're generally healthier people. Now, not to say that uh, there's no unhealthy ve uh, vegan or vegetarian people out there. I mean, there's still probably is, but the majority of them probably not going to fast food. I think fast food's going to stay what they are. I think they're just going to continue to be majority for the, for the most part, unhealthy fast food. 
You know, it just people don't go there for that. But I, on the on the uh, flip side, as far as the meat market and grocery stores and stuff, I think a huge dent there. Yeah. Um, but that was yeah, that's kind of just my experience. What's to up? be honest, if they really, if their agenda was really to push it and everything, I feel like they would just need to figure out a way to like make it tasty, like taste like the exact same thing, but make them give their customers that good feeling, like oh, I ate something good today, type of thing, like. If they that's how that, that burger was man, when I had like, that burger. I'm telling you, that's how it was. They could fucking uh, kill that shit. Check it out. Let me know what you guys think, man. But I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Um, and increasingly, like I said, meat and meat has just started to gross me out a little bit more and more as I kind of go on. As we've had some just experiences with, we normally buy try to buy the leanest ground beef and the right. shit we can. But uh, honestly, we had a bad experience. I hate, I hate to trash people, but Hello Fresh. You ever, you know, those meals you order? Yeah. There was meal prep joints. Mm-hmm. Hello Fresh uses the shittiest fucking ground beef, dog. Do like, they? Literally, we were ordering the meals and then we would just buy ground beef and sub it out. And then I was like, why are we doing that? We're still paying. Doesn't we're paying for sense. this, and we're yeah. You could just taste. It was just chewy. It was harder to fucking chew through. Ugh. You could just taste more like it wasn't that lean of ground beef. That was one of our first experiences a few months ago. Where we were kind of like, eh, this is weird. You know what I mean? The irony. And it's, yeah, it's just <laughs> gone downhill for us since then. Um, so, I mean, I hate to gross anyone out or anything, but I mean, yeah. this is a podcast about life and what we're doing. And it's what it is. That's what the next steps are for me. We're kind of moving into that range. Like I said, not to say that I'm a fully avoiding meat, but if there's an option, flexitarian, if I, if I can flex out the meat for, for a better option, it's going to be, give me the same taste or around the same taste. I'm cool. You know what I mean? I'm not a guy that eats a ton anyway. It expands um, your life expectancy. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, exactly. I mean, if you can keep that shit out of your body and keep those chemicals and all the stuff they're injecting and shit out of your body, it's, you know. I mean, what? Why not? Why not? Uh, so let's move along, man. Let's. Uh, I guess Wild Card Weekend. Obviously, you heard Mr. Post, man. I yeah. was played for your boy Cody Parkey. Uh, we got to jump into that. Um, huge, huge playoff weekend mm-hmm. overall. Did things go the way you thought they would go? They did. Uh, I was I was not surprised because uh, I put uh, Indianapolis as one of my heaters. Um, I, actually, we both did. We both agreed on that. So I was not surprised on that game. I was surprised that. You know, uh, they kept Houston to seven points at home. I was a little surprised about that, but I was not surprised about the uh, Andrew Luck. He looks great, man. The Colts look great. The D is on fire. Marlon Mack, where'd this fool come from? O line, dude. Ain't the, nobody shutting him down. I don't know. That O line is so sick. The O line is yeah. too too raw. Too I don't fire. think it's necessarily Marlon Mack. I don't want to take anything away from sure, him. Sure, sure. But I do want to say, if you if you notice the trend by the winning teams of the playoff games this weekend. The trend was O-line. O-line. All the teams that won this weekend, their O-lines dominated. And if that does not tell you, as far as my squad, the Denver Broncos, where you need to go this year in the draft, it's got to be O-line. Totally. Minnesota's O-line was a lot better last year when they had Case Keenum. Mm -hmm. You could say what you want about Kirk Cousins and uh, them not making the playoffs this year and all that other stuff. But regardless, the line he had in Minnesota last year was better than the line he had in Denver this year. Not to say that he would have been an all-pro, but he would have done better with a better O-line. Yeah. Let's just be real. The Broncos O-line has been trashed since Peyton Manning's last season. Yeah, They have to go. Garrett Bowles was a terrible pick. They should have gone with Ryan Ramschek, who did yep. make the all-pro team, by the way. Yep. Garrett Bowles made the all-pro team in fucking holding. Yeah, so, yeah. in penalties, I was right. going to say, just in general. <laughs> exactly. <made> all- <laughs> fucking guy. True. So, God, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. So, sure. yeah, it's... Uh, it's the Broncos. So just, just to, you know, I know it's not a fucking Bronco heavy show, but right. uh, that's my squad and that's the team they need to go or that's the way they need to go in this draft sure. is O-line. Whether, now, I like the option or the oppor- uh, the opportunity to maybe go pick up Joe Flacco mm-hmm. in the offseason. The only problem is you still owe Case Keenum another $17 million or whatever yeah. it is. So you're going to have to pay him next year anyway. Do you want to pay Flacco on top of that? Eh, I don't know. Um, I'd, rather, I, I'd rather put it somewhere else. I'd rather put. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, well, just just go along with go along with Case next year, but go heavy on O line this yeah, year. Go he- just like the Colts did last year's draft. First pick, it was a top ten pick. O lineman, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Look how good the dude's doing. Quentin Nelson or whatever his name yeah. is. So crushing it over there. Um, Indianapolis O line. The reason they won that game. The reason they dominated that game. And I would. Um, I'll venture to say, I don't know if they're going to go in and beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead this weekend. I think it's going to be a tough matchup. Yeah. But what I will say, I think the Colts, uh, two things here about the Colts. Number one, they're going to be, I don't know about a dynasty, but they're going to be a tough team for the next decade. Yeah. The next five to 10 years, now that Andrew Luck actually has a line, he had no line the first, his first five seasons five there seasons. in Indianapolis, he's had no O line. He's been getting beat up. Obviously, he's gotten sacked so many times, he's been hurt. Yeah. Um, 
now with that the O-line the way it is and the way they've really come on in the second half of the season, I just don't see how that team's not going to be super, super legit. The way the defense is playing, too. Dude, even their secondary. Dude, they're looking good. I think good. their secondary is going to bring it, dude. I know. For, is Bob Sanders back? Dude, What's going on over there? I don't know. Jesus. But, uh, dude, their secondary is going to bring it against Kansas City. I think yeah, I think, I think Indianapolis pulls up uh, pulls off the upset. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. Uh, second point on the Colts or second thought about the Colts? How fucking stupid is Josh McDaniels? Oh, he worst. had that coaching job last year. The worst. They hired him. He took it and then he bailed. Stayed, bailed on it and stayed in New England. Bailed. What an idiot. Yep. Now that 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 looks like the best fucking job in the world right now. Dog. And I think I think we can even do a heaters now if you want. I think the Chargers go there and upset. Oh really? I you, do. You thought they looked that good yesterday in I, Baltimore? I think the Chargers. You thought Rivers looked that sick well, throwing for 119 yards. When we're talking, when was. dude. When we're talking AFC, I think Chargers go upset. I think Indy goes up, goes in upsets. I, I think do. you're, you don't think you're giving the Chargers a little too much credit. They went on the road and beat a rookie quarterback and kicked four field goals in the first half. No, I just I I dude. At, with with uh, Philip Rivers at the helm, um, I think Melvin Gordon. Obviously, he he even got injured for a little bit and it was taken out of the game. Um, dude, Bosa and Ingram. You think they're going to go to New England and beat those fools in New England with field goals? Bosa and Ingram won that game for the Chargers. Absolutely. But th- that's what I'm saying. Is that enough? It wasn't a great team performance. So. Team performances can't always happen as a team, right? You're always going to have one or two players that kind of run the helm. You look at Ingram and Kamara, the splits that they have, and and bring in Taysom Hill for fuck's sake. You yeah. think Breeze can? You think they got there but just based off of Breeze? Breeze had fucking five shitter games under ten points. Okay, so I think it's the split. When one person sucks, the other, you know, the other part of the team is bringing bringing the individuals up. And I believe that. The Chargers are more of a complete team than what anybody thinks. As a matter of fact, I could see uh, Los Angeles Chargers and uh, New Orleans Saints in the Super Bowl, to be honest with you. New Orleans Saints? New Orleans Saints and the and the LA Chargers, man. So, I can see that in the Super Bowl. It's possible. We'll see what happens. But I do see the Chargers and the Indianapolis upsetting this next week. I do. You're not uh, – go ahead. No. You're not, you're not, you don't want um, – uh, you're not worried at all. About Philadelphia and Big Nick, Big Dick Nick going absolutely. Into Indian, I, I love that. Uh, I love that story. Weekend. If they, if they, if they win, I'll be super pumped for him. But I think that I think that momentum is there. But I, I, I just don't know how sustainable it is. This year is quite different uh, than last year. And I, and I'd started off with their defense. Their defense have got gotten a lot better the the second half of the season in Philly. Uh, but it's not the defense of last year. Um, I just don't think they're well balanced. But having Big Big Dick Nick at the helm. That's always concerning. How big of a loss is Josh Gordon for the Patriots going into that Charger game? You think they're going to suffer without him? I, I, yeah, I think they're going to suffer a little bit because he's a, he's a versatile target. And when you have more weapons, it's hard, it's harder to plan. So yeah, I do, I do think that hurts. I I give the Chargers a, uh, I mean, I, I give them as much shot as any to, to win this weekend in yeah. New England. I, it's not because I think the Chargers are a great team. I just yeah. think New England isn't what we, you know, what they normally are. Now, I know we feel that way a lot of times, and then Brady comes out and sure. puts it in our ass and goes to the Super Bowl <laughs> anyway. Totally. But uh, for me, I mean, you got no Josh Gordon. Yeah. Gronk is a shell of himself. Guy can barely move. God, what's he doing, man? Who are your targets he's, he's outside mo- of Edelman? Edelman and Hogan? That's it. I mean, uh, what's uh, Philip I, Dorsett? And I don't even think those are viable targets. You know what the targets are? Having that, you know, uh, uh, James White. James White? Fucking Rex Burkhead at the helm. And then uh, what's the what's the other guy that wears the stupid long socks? Uh, pa- Patterson. Cordell Patterson. Oh, Cordero. Or Cordero. Yeah, yeah. whatever. Uh, Cordero. I think those are probably more. You have Edelman as the main weapon, and then you have those, you know, three odd as just mixing up schemes. I think that's where it's at, especially with the loss of Gordon. But I don't know what to expect. I I, I expect Sandy or L.A. Chargers giving him a hard time. If you were to give it serious thought, would you predict that Hunter Henry is going to have a huge game in New England? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, can we get Stephen A. on the phone? Wait, where's Stephen A. When can we you get need Stephen him? A. on the phone? I, I, I think Hunter Henry is going off. He's going weekend. off this I th- week. I think Henry, Hunter Henry has five catches and two tutties. Yeah, easy. I mean, easy. <laughs> Idiot. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I think Kareem Hunt is gonna kill it this week. No, that's a dude. <laughs> I I thoroughly enjoyed the, the all the games over the weekend. Did you watch them all? Did you have to work at all? Were you able to uh, jump in and kind of entrench yourself in all the games? Uh, yeah, for the most part, one of them. Uh, hopefully, Saturday we'll- I had to work, dude. Yeah. So I was running around. I was catching enough, but then I, when I got home, I went back and watched them on uh, NFL replay. Did you? Nice. And, and went through that way, but. 
it seemed like I didn't miss much. Mm-hmm. Like every, as I was watching the games on replay, it kind of felt like I had them on my iPad while I was working. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of was, I was looking over and I was still getting all the, all the uh, updates and all the info sure. and I was still seeing all the big plays. Yeah. I just wasn't sitting down watching every play, but it didn't feel like I missed much actually missing the games. I mean, before I knew it, the Colts were up 21, nothing. Yeah. You know, you're just like, whoa, what the fuck happened? Yeah. And we at the shop, a few of us went in and put a bet in here around the shop. Did we it? all went in on the Colts plus one. They started out at plus three. So we actually lost a few points, still took them plus one at what you and I got them at. Mm-hmm. And uh, easiest money of the weekend yeah. right there. Feet up for sure. Easiest money of the weekend. JJ got excited. He saw everyone winning here around the shop Uh-oh. during the day on the Colts game. So he decided to throw in a last minute bet on the night game, which was Seattle and Dallas. JJ, not, not a good idea. How did you feel for your first bet? It sucked because I obviously <laughs> lost. I won't lie. I did it to myself. I didn't do enough research. I kind of based it off of Seahawks uh, kind of past history of doing in the playoffs. They usually do pretty well. Histor- Historical is important. Yeah, especially like getting past. I thought they would at least get past the wild card. They almost did. Yeah. But they literally doubt. A little too little. Why too did little. you Cowboys think- took the two points I fucking needed? But why did you whatever. think they were getting past the wild card? Because just. Just based off historical reasons. Oh, but no. I, actually, I owe you six bucks back. Why? Because you had the Seahawks plus two. It yeah. was a push. Yeah. Yeah. So they pushed out. It was a push. So he gave me, push, he yeah. gave me, he placed the, he wanted to win $5. So yeah. it was six to win five. Yeah. If you know how to, if you, if you gamble, you know, there's usually 10% juice. So yep. $6 to win five. We don't do any change or anything. So, um, you're going to get your six bucks back because it was a push. Oh, it fuck was 22, yeah. 24. Never mind. Which I feel. Pretty decent now. <laughs> that that leads me into heaters because I actually had the Seahawks plus two as well. So I thought I thought I had them plus one, but I do have them plus two. So so that's a push. So I got the push as well. So now you've got uh, you've got that now two You're back to five hundred two pushes. That no two pushes. fuck oh. no. I'm twenty four because yeah. I got the win on the Colts. So that moved me up one there. So I'm twenty four, twenty six, and two. Mm. Uh, Dallas, 28 and 24. He's four games up. We still have the national championship game tonight. I'm on Bama minus five and a half. Dallas is on Clemson plus five and a half. Uh, now that I, as we get closer to game time, I'm going to lose this bet. I'm going to lose this bet. I don't think Bama's covering. It's, it's, yeah. That's it's a, a bad. That's a tough that's a bad game. Bet. Is gonna be way too fucking close. That's, I feel uh, like. that's what I'm yeah. saying. I, I think you, need, a, you you should take plus the points if you're being smart. Yeah. Uh, if I wasn't going with my Bama loyalty, my friends that went there. Yeah. I I would have bet Clemson. Too chalky. Tre- Trevor Lawrence plus points. Why that kid's gonna be too chalky. Do you know who's playing? Uh, too chalky. Yep. Which quarterback's gonna be put in? Yeah, Trevor. Oh, tre- oh, uh, for Bama, it's it's Tua. Yeah, it's Tua. Tua. Oh, yeah, they're not Tua. using the backup. Uh, Jalen. Um, they may use no, him no, no. for some for some schemes, but uh, no, it's Tua. Okay. Yeah, Hertz. Hertz on. is uh, he. Tua started the last game. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, he started the uh, okay. against OU. Yeah, yeah. Jalen yeah, Hurts only started up. the game where he's Tua healthy. was 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 not healthy. He's healthy. Everything. Yeah, everything's yeah. good. Uh, he's healthy. Um. So yeah, that's where we're sitting at uh, as far as heaters go. Yeah, I had uh, I had Indy just like you, yep. and then I had San Diego Chargers covered on both. Yeah, so, easy, easy, yeah, easy, easy money for you on both of them, dude. Yeah. Those are both feet up. Um. So okay, let me let me go back well, to Well, you know, Lamar Jackson came finally finally came back in like what with 5 minutes left of the fucking quarter. Oh, I know, I was quarter, talking to someone on Twitter about that. And they were all like, of a, all of a sudden, we were going back and forth and he was saying up. that saying that Lamar Jackson, you know, cuz I was saying should uh, you should put in Flacco. I was saying, you know, a lot of people were. Put in Joe Flacco. Tony Romo. Tony Romo said put him in. Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah, at least in the fourth quarter. Why was he out? Uh, no, Lamar Jackson's been starting since yeah. midseason. Oh, really? Yeah, Joe yeah. Flacco got hurt, and then oh. Jackson and they came in, him. And, and he's been benched ever since. Yeah, Ooh, so got you. basically, uh, I I get it. John Harbaugh has got to. You got to make sure that uh, you give your rookie cor- quarterback a shot. You want to make sure the team knows you're riding with that guy. Yeah. You want to make sure. Uh, your team knows that guy is the future. You don't want to send any mixed messages. You don't want to send the wrong message. I get it. I get all that stuff. But at the end of the day, you know Joe Flacco is going to be gone after this year. Yeah. Regardless of what happens. You know what I mean? Even if he takes you and wins the Super Bowl, he's not the future. Right. It's kind of the weird situation like with Nick Foles. Like, where's he after this year? If he, Even if he wins the Super Bowl, what do you do there? Yeah. You're there in a, a weird spot. Sim, similar, not similar, but they're in a weird spot as well. Yeah. I'll just say that. They're well, kind of parallel. And I would add to that, if Nick Foles somehow does help lead them to a fucking championship, which I, I don't see that happening. That's not my forecast. But if if that does happen, um, and bless his heart if he does, I think that's going to be fucking sweet. I think that's cool. 
then what does Philadelphia have? Right. What kind of decision do they have to make? Because Wentz is the future. Wentz is probably the mo- more mobile quarterback and, and more versatile for sure. But damn, dog, you're putting all this all this heat on Nick Foles, and he still keeps fucking winning. Does Nick Foles have a weird Eli Manning sort of quality to him? I think so. It's, it's just that weird, yeah. like, he's no good until there's backs against the wall, yeah. and he has to come up big, and sure. he does. And then you could argue that, He's outplayed Carson Wentz this year. Agreed. But not in the beginning of the year. No. The beginning of the year, when Carson before Carson Wentz was fully back, he was awful. Yeah. He was fucking the littlest of dick nicks. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, he's back. <laughs> it's playoff dick. time. You got to win three three to get in. Yeah. He fucking takes them on, wins three. Yeah. I think it's either two or three straight at the end of the uh, uh, regular season yep. to even get into the playoffs. Then he goes out, balls out yesterday. Some of the throws he was making. Him and Russell Wilson were dropping dimes, dude. Yeah. I know Russell Wilson didn't win, but that one uh, to Baldwin along the sideline, yeah. unbelievable throw. Same with dude. Luck. Yeah, he dropped on two. the run. Ooh, he mm-hmm. dropped two dimes as well. But yeah, for sure. No doubt. And Golden Tate hasn't done shit Not all shit. year since he went to fucking uh, Philly. And all of a sudden, he's he's a fucking wide receiver one. Yep. He's, he came up big. Um, he, I know Ertz had a big year, but Dallas Goddard, dude, he came up huge yesterday yeah, at the tight end spot, and I actually like that guy. I think that guy's gritty. Mm-hmm. I think he's tough. He makes catches in traffic. Yeah. I think he's a perfect complimentary tight end, another weapon for Philly yeah. alongside of Ertz. Yeah. Um, Isn't it funny the collapse on Ertz, though, after Wentz went out? Yeah. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. So, and I know Wentz and Ertz, but have dude, been- Ertz is getting double. You see, you see the yeah. coverage he's getting. Yeah. They're bracketing the shit out of that guy. You know what I mean? They know if they take him away. That's what I'm saying. That's why Goddard. It's nice that he's emerged on the yeah. other side. Uh, it's cool that he's opened that up for Wentz. Jeffrey's obviously getting a lot of coverage downfield. That's yep. opened things up for Tate a little bit yesterday. Um, overall, let's just be real. The Bears play like shit. Yeah. Khalil Mack fucking was on the side of a milk carton yesterday. Yeah, what disappeared? His, was it was it not Peters? Who who had him last night? Oh, Peters, dude. Peters? Jason Peters locked him down. Had a hell 90% of, a game. of the time, he was in one on one, too. Dude, That's the thing. I don't want to hear, oh, Khalil was getting doubled no. and all this bullshit. He was not. Peters stood his ground. He, he killed him. No shit. He, he locked him down over there on yep. that side. Khalil Mack did not have the game. The secondary didn't play well. And how, Matt Nagy, how are you getting the ball to Tariq Cohen six times in a playoff game? Yeah. You got to get him the ball more than that. That guy's electric. Yeah. That guy's made huge game-changing plays yeah. all season, and you get him the ball six times. Look what he does on simple uh, kick returns. Right. Guys, At the end is, of the game, got him in position. Know. Yeah. I mean, we uh, let's be real. Would we be talking about this? Would we, we be blaming Matt Nagy if the ball wasn't tipped at the end, if uh, Doug Peterson doesn't call the timeout, yeah. Parkey hits the first field goal. If any of this stuff happens, we're not having this combo. You know, we're talking about, hey, it was a good season for Philly. No one probably really saw uh, really saw them going past this game anyway. Super Bowl champs, at least they made it to the playoffs. They didn't even look like they were going to get that far. Just wasn't the team that we thought it was going to be. That could have been the narrative. Right. All of a sudden, with this missed field goal, or with this... Uh, doink off the post or double doink off the post. I mean, six <laughs> posts in three weeks or whatever it was for the guy. <laughs> yeah. You got to feel bad. I mean, no shit. we're talking about a, a kicker that Robbie Gold was was the Bears kicker for years. Oh, dude. Mr. Solid. Just, the franchise yep. kicker, dude, for years. They gave him the boot. They signed Parkey to a four-year fucking deal. This is the first year of the deal. Yep. And and look what happens down the stretch. I know. I saw the video of him getting booed as he ran off the field. Worst. Uh, the good thing is, I, I think Cody Parkey's a pretty strong guy mentally. I heard the post game presser. He sounded good. Dude, he sounded solid. He, yeah, he sounded really good. Like yep. super professional for sure. Like that'd be so hard for me to do, man. So shout outs to him, dude. Well, and he said his teammates really, really big upped him. No okay. one was, you know, everyone was like, "Hey, we got your back. Yeah. You know, it's it's all good, man. We know we know who you are. You're the guy. Don't worry." Yeah. Uh, it's funny because I saw a bunch of people on Twitter. Oh, somebody lost their job and blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, do your fucking research. Guy just signed a four-year deal. They're not cutting him. No, no one lost their job. You know what I mean? No, The coach ain't fired. Parky's not fired. Uh, the Bears just didn't play well enough to win. That's what it is, man. They should have won at the end. They got themselves in position to win, but it shouldn't have been that close. They had multiple opportunities. They just didn't do enough on offense. They didn't, like I said, I don't think they got the ball to Cohen nearly enough. Mm -hmm. They didn't uh, play well enough defense. Howard looked like Howard looked like shit. Yeah. Monsters of the midway, all that whole, the whole monsters of the midway defense didn't show up. Didn't see it. Didn't see it. So I, I think that was um Yeah, Philly's defense was a lot better. I it know just dude. as a whole, dude. Their secondary, who was that? Maddox and then the 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 French guy, LeBlanc, whatever. LeBlanc, yeah. Dude, those guys, I man. Know. They were they were playing lights out, man. I know. That whole D was was super fire. Um okay, so let's move into um DraftKings tournament. Dude, yep. over the weekend we had uh, a serious turnout. The first one 
The first one it was only yeah, I think it was like, okay. what, twelve people or something. Eleven like or twelve. That. Yep. We made the fucking thing. You guys uh heeded the advice. You got your lineups in. We got more than ten people. The shit didn't get shut down. The shit ran. Everything was right. good. Saturday, um let me pull up the uh, results here. Can I go back to Saturday? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I took fifth. Uh you took seventh? Seventh, yep. yep. So the homie Chone, Choner man, won that one with a score of 142.92. Second was place second. was Pena. That yeah. was his second win. Yeah. Yep, second one. Uh, Pena took second, 122, so he still wasn't even close. Choner kind of killed everyone yeah. by 20 points, uh, or closest was 20 points behind. Uh, so he took down the number one there. And then on Sunday, we dude, it looked like we were not going to get enough entries. We were at five entries mm-hmm. with an hour to go. I tweeted out the link. I invited everyone in the group. All of a sudden... I'm getting messages about 1030, 1045. People hitting me, yo, where's the league? I can't see the league. I'm trying to get my entry in. I can't get my entry in. I'm like, what are you talking about? So I go, look, the shit's full. It maxed out 20 out of 20. Because um, if you remember from a previous podcast, I said it, that I, I set it at 20 because that's the max they'll allow you to set it and auto resize. Right. So if we don't get 20, they'll resize it down to 10 yep. um, or 12 or whatever. But you yeah. got to get at least a minimum of 10. If, if we don't do get 10, way. then it gets canceled Then out. it doesn't run. Yep. But if I set it to 30 or 50, if we don't fill that, it won't auto resize. So now it's not going to run at all. So the most I could do is 20 to guarantee that it runs as long as we get 10. So you guys filled it up on Sunday, which was crazy. So I think I'm going to take the same approach. I'm going to, uh, for this weekend, we'll do, we'll do two of them. We'll do Saturday and Sunday again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and invite all uh, manually. I went and invited everyone as in our group. I thought it was sending out notifications automatically. No, it wasn't. But I went through and manually invited and I didn't invite you cause you were already in, sure. but I manually invited everyone else that wasn't in and, uh, great results. Yeah. So I'm going to just do that this weekend. Um, I encourage you to get your shit in early. Yeah. I mean, as soon as you hear the podcast on Thursday, as soon as you see the link in the DraftKings, I would encourage you to get your just make a lineup, pop. make it make a basic lineup, whatever, and then as as the days go by, change that. Yeah, lineup you can and, edit your lineup it. anytime. Yeah. It's not locked in. Yeah. So if you make it on Thursday, just to just, just to, to reserve your spot, spot, you're fine. You could have whoever in there, and then you can go change it as much as you want before game time. Yeah. Once the kickoff starts at 11 a.m. on, uh, or I mean, I'm sorry, 2:30 on Saturday. That's gonna be it. Mm-hmm. You're gonna you're gonna be locked in, sure. but until that time, you could edit it up. So uh, for the second one, um, that was the full one. Twenty people in that bitch. What? Uh, um, now my thing is refreshing. Fire. <laughs> I've got it here if you'd like. Uh, on that, uh, on then on the uh, Sunday, I shit the bed. So your boy uh, TTF was uh, fifth at 113 points. Uh, I myself was at the bottom almost at 17th place. You know, the unfortunate thing was, man, I put I put Big Dick Nick in there. Um, I put Keenan Allen thinking there was going to be a good big day. Jeffrey and then Ertz, those were my shining points. You know, I put Gus Edwards in at two and a half points. John Brown at three and a half points. Uh, you know, Jordan Howard at three and a half. What are Damn, you going to do? Right. I shit the bed. I uh, I went with Lamar Jackson and it was looking terrible. It was looking that's the worst. That's what's, that's what's weird about uh, fantasy or DraftKings sometimes is Nick Foles had a... T- uh, 10 times better day than Lamar Jackson did. Yeah. But he put up 16 points. Lamar Jackson put up 19, all in garbage time. Yep. Uh, I consider it garbage time. You guys can call it whatever the fuck you want. I got an argument. Or I was going back and forth with the cat on Twitter about that. He said, oh, well, he's br- you said put him Flacco, and Lamar Jackson brought him back in the game. I'm like, he didn't bring him back in the game. No. He scored a couple late touchdowns yeah. and brought him back in the game-ish. <laughs> he got him closer. <laughs> right, <Ish. laughs> exactly. There was no, he, they were never really back in the game. I mean, I get it. They had the ball with a chance to score a touchdown at the end to possibly tie the game. Yeah. But what happened the whole game? Lamar Jackson shit the bed in the yeah. pocket. With, with traffic around him and got the ball knocked away. As the saying goes, too little, too late, dog. Right, right. Exactly. That's what it was. It, I, didn't, I never felt, maybe Charger fans were nervous. I don't know. Me personally, I never felt like they were in the game. I never felt like, oh shit, here it goes. They're, they're going to come back. No. I never felt like there's a possibility they come back. If they would have scored a game-tying touchdown and come back, I would have been, it would have been a minor miracle. I would have been one of those guys like, holy shit, this is up there with, the play against New England yeah. at the end of the game. This is up there with yeah Miami and New England. This yep. is up there with miracles. Sure, like, to the, bring them back from that far down. This the is the game last year against the uh, New Orleans Saints, the fucking Vikings. Right, right, Viking. Yeah, game. yeah. This is 
the uh, Patriots Super Bowl against Atlanta. This yeah. is that kind of territory. This isn't fucking. Oh, he brought him back, and now he's playing yeah. good. And the, no, the Let's, Giants Eli Manning in the right. fucking helmet catch. This is, this is up on. there with that. This is a miracles nah. situation. If he brings them back, yeah. I mean, this is a miracle thing. Right now, what he's doing is racking up garbage time stats. You guys yeah. call it what you want. It's fucking garbage time. The guy was not. The uh, the team was not close. They weren't within striking distance. I get that they got within a score way late, but still, at the end of the day, they weren't even within striking distance then when he got stripped of the ball. They were on their own side of the fifty, I think. So let's yeah, you know, let's slow down with uh, leaving Lamar Jackson. I just thought it would give them a better chance to have Joe Flacco in the game at the end. Lamar looked stymied. Uh, he looked. He was just off. He didn't look like he was throwing his balls accurately. He, they were containing him. They weren't allowing him to get outside the pocket and run. I know that's a big part of his game. So obviously, it looks like that's the way you beat Lamar Jackson for now. You control his running. You force him to pass, and you force him to beat you with your arm. And he didn't prove that he could do that yesterday against, I guess you could say, one of the NFL's better defenses. Are they a, one of the top five defenses in the league? No, but they're a better defense. Uh, Derwin James, obviously, is a rookie winning uh, his All-Pro honors. That's a huge... I love Derwin James coming out of the draft last year. I thought maybe that was too early to take him, where the Broncos were, obviously, at five. Right. Um, you couldn't take him there, but the uh, the Chargers took him not too much later, and they got an All-Pro on their hands. Derwin James, safety, young guy, going to be there. We're going to see him twice a year here in Denver. He's going to be an All-Pro for uh, years to come. Great player. Not, uh, not one of the top defenses in the league. They did stymie Lamar Jackson. I think Flacco should have been in. I think as a head coach, you give Flacco and your team, or you give uh, your team every chance to win. Maybe, maybe Flacco comes in in the second half. He starts seeing the field differently. Uh, he starts getting it going quicker than Lamar did. At eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter, you're down three scores. It's a little bit late. If Joe Flacco gets you, uh, gets a score there, you get a score off of your defensive turnover. Some of those turnovers you had early in the second half, you get a score there instead of kicking field goals. Right. Tucker got the field goal. Then he missed the other field goal. Mm -hmm. The long one is first miss in his playoffs. first miss in playoff history. Yeah. Yep. So it was just a lot of weird stuff, man. Um, yeah. But what do you think about the Flacco thing? You think they should have put Flacco in or no? Uh, I think they could have, uh, but uh, no. I think I think for me, when I think about it, uh, you know, you've got to show Lamar Jackson. You've got to put the confidence in him for next year. You know, let him know, let the team know that he's your guy. I th I stand by that. I think that's factual, factual stuff. And so there. does Joe. I mean, in press conference, you know, Joe he, he deflected everything. He said yeah. Lamar's the guy. I'm Lamar's the Lamar. guy. Mm -hmm. He, you know, don't even try it. Don't even try to so get that's, me to. That's exactly where I'm at. And and this guy, you know, he's versatile. He's hard to watch film on. He's hard to understand what he's going to do. Uh, he's more mobile than Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco, oh man, oh man in the pocket. You know. But I feel I still think Flacco's super talented. He's an MVP for fuck's sake. Uh, so from that and the accolades, that makes me kind of want to. That's put him why in. I feel like you had to put him in. He's a guy with that playoff experience. Experience. Yeah. He knows what the hell he's doing. Also, the, t the other team, we've talked about this before. They didn't prepare for Joe Flacco. Yeah. It would not surprise me at all if Joe Flacco stepped in there and started slicing them up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like we saw with Fitzpatrick and Jameis and Winston earlier was, this year. That's the comparison Back I was going to do. You bring him, you, you pull Jackson, you put him in, it automatically changes everything because they don't have film. They have not studied Joe right. Flacco for the last, what, six weeks? That's my Ish? point. Seven weeks? So I see what you're saying yeah. as far as... Lamar and I opened up my argument with that. Yeah. I, I get it. I get that's, that's what you got to do. But that's a mental thing. That's all that is. That's for that's for a franchise that is changing and evolving into the years to come. Your job as a fucking coach is to win. Right. And you have to make the decisions, the best decisions for your team to win at that moment. And for that moment, it was to put Flacco in is my that's that's my overall answer via what he's done, MVP caliber, uh, making the right decisions in playoff crunch. He's been in playoffs before. He's probably the guy that you should have put him in after, even arguably when the second half started is, is, is my argument. But I think Harbaugh is really thinking about the future and trying to give a better mental set for his uh, future franchise quarterback. And I, I, and I don't think that's that's his job as a coach sometimes. Right. And I, I went back you and forth. you got to think now versus in the future. Yeah. And I went back and forth a couple times uh, initially, kind of blaming blaming the Ravens D, you know. And I, I sure. was uh, I was pretty unhappy with what they were doing. I, I thought, you know, this is supposed to be the vaunted Ravens defense. Everyone's talked about them being the best defense going into the playoffs. They and, look like it. Uh, everything there, they kind of disappointed me. But I think I was looking at it a little unfairly. Someone brought to my attention on Twitter, and uh, I have no problem being wrong. You know, I sure. I was thinking. Um, I was almost being looking at it from a Broncos standpoint. I was getting so frustrated with the Ravens watching their team that it felt like I was watching the Broncos. It felt like the exact same shit. The Broncos D is playing a bend, don't break kind of defense. Yeah. They're holding them to field goals. They're keeping them down enough, but the offense just can't 
move the ball. You can't get you can't flip the field and get better field position for your defense. You can't do anything. And at that point, you know, at some point you got to stop blaming the defense and you got to blame the offense. If they're not moving the ball, if they're not putting your defense in a position to win, if your defense is constantly or the offense is constantly going three and out, leaving your defense on the field, getting tired out and worn down, what are you going to do? Yeah. So I was unfairly blaming the defense. I was like, man, this defense, what the fuck? This is the Ravens D. Like, what? This this is shitty. But yeah. in all fairness, you had to put that on the offense. The offense just wasn't doing it. It was, like I said, it's the Broncos offense. Three and out, three and out, three and out. Oh, nine punts later. You know what I mean? <laughs> totally. You're like, what is going on? So what you're saying is you didn't start Badgley? Uh, in oh, your- dude. No, no. So funny, funny thing. <laughs> we were texting about that. Yeah. I was looking through the league. I was like, damn, no one started fucking Badgley and or Bagley or whatever his name is Bagley 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 off of uh, the kicker for San Diego and I'm looking through and I'm like damn no one started this guy what are the chances of that in our league but then I forgot you can't start a kicker you can't in DK you can't only on the captain mode yep so that's where I got confused I was and I think you got confused too too. because in captain mode you can start a kicker in fucking regular DK like we did yesterday with attorney you can't because I literally text you I'm like oh man all these fuckers be sleeping including my including ourselves right Right. you know not putting in the kicker but yeah you can only do it in the showdown captain mode yeah so. so which is fun we've played that a couple times Hell yeah that's great if you guys have never played that on DraftKings, it's it's uh it's cool it's like a little um it's like a little uh five game it's a one game slate it's yeah. it's, it's a contest that's built for a one game uh slate so yeah. if there's only one game going on there's just a sunday night or a monday night or whatever it's like five people your captain gets you one and a half times, times points value. so you can make anyone your captain but they're going to cost you a little more than they normally cost i think they cost one and a half times points yeah so or one and a half times salary i'm sorry yep so you're paying a little bit more to make that person your captain but you're also getting one and a half times points so that's very very important to do and then you can choose five other players they can be anyone yeah. they can be kickers tight ends running backs they don't have to be in any specific order you could choose both quarterbacks you could do whatever you want so it's kind of an interesting thing in dk um but as far as the uh as far as the tournament this week we got to give a the shout out the homie that took it down this, on sunday so it's chonerman on saturday and a raven 52 i'm not sure if he's a ravens fan yeah must be but, a new guy uh, i haven't seen him before. i haven't seen him i haven't seen him either welcome he took it down he scored 127 i was at 113 and fifth so that t- that shows you there there's there was a a little bit it was a little bit more competitive than Saturdays. He had one twenty seven and the second place was one nineteen, one seventeen, one sixteen, and then me at one thirteen. So uh, Dallas was down in the basement, seventeenth. Mm-hmm. Not too bad, uh, <laughs> but I was shocked. Hey, great job, man! I want to give everyone fucking some hand claps for uh, getting in DK this yeah, week. Tight. Everyone Maxing got in, filled both contests, maxed out Sunday's contest. So uh, that was awesome, man. Mm-hmm. Anything more on? Um, are you cool on football? We'll, we'll kind of break down the the games going into this weekend yeah. and give our picks and stuff for that on Thursday's show or uh, the one you hear on Friday that you'll hear going into um, the divisional round of the weekend. So we'll kind of get into that. But right now. Where we sit on heaters, 28 and 24 for Dallas, 24, 26, and two pushes. Those pushes me, are gross. They're, they're terrible. Sorry to hear that. They man. fuck up the, I don't want three column record here. I just want wins and losses. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Messing up the whole thing. And then you we have the like National Championship. Like Steelers or the Browns. Jesus. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, let's move along, man. Let's move along into, um, I think. Uh, are we doing sneakers? Yeah, let's go sneakers, man. Sneaker releases, pickups, uh, all that stuff. Let's go into the Stock X. Um, stuff sure. and kind of start there. So, what are we looking at as far as releases this weekend, or what you're going for this week? You bet, man. So, uh, kind of a heavy week. There's, which means there's a lot of releases, but not necessarily anything that I'm feeling and I have to have. I'm not jumping out the window for anything. Um, so, they are doing a new colorway. Uh, well, actually, a couple new colorways of the Element 87s. You know, I've I've been a big advocate of yeah. that model and that make uh, for uh, quite some time. But um, have you seen these two new colorways? What are they called? So, on the tenth. Uh, they're called, they're just literally the Volt Racer. And then you have the Light Orwood Brown Volt Glow. Mm. So these are both coming out the 10th uh, this week. So the Volt colorway is kind of fire. You still have kind of that black midsole, uh, or, uh, which, is, which is super sick, I think. But as you and I tried locally, remember when that last black midsole came out? I forget what colorway it was, but the first black midsole, Element 87. Yeah. They didn't look good on feet to us. No. It you was the I mean? orange. It was the blue and orange. That it was blue, like the Bronco yeah. kind of Bronco no, joint. That, no, the Bronco joint had the white midsole. Oh, that you're right, looked you're right. good. What it was, was it? It was like that black midsole with the, the red and the blue. That's right. That's yeah. right. It was almost like a the pink. Yeah, uh, yep. yeah almost pink like an infrared. Pink pods popping off there. In yeah. Infrared, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And we just we, we could have both got them at What are those West? really called? I don't like calling them herpy pods. Fucking gross me out. <laughs> They're called herpy pods. What are they really called? Like, what are the, what's the actual name for those shits? 
I don't know. All right, I'm just going to say the pods. Okay. I got to get off that for 2019. This shit's grossing me out. So, yeah, those are the 10th. I kind of like that Volt Racer uh, I do, too. I'm, I'm interested. So uh, I, I want to see it in store. Yeah. Or I want to see it in hand, I mean. Yeah. Uh, but I'm interested. It's not um, something I think I would buy blind, though. For sure. For sure. But 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 you know how I am with Element 87s. I told you that. When we try them on, you saw. Yeah. Uh, sizing is so important with this shoe because otherwise it looks like a shitty Ziploc bag on your foot. That's true. It's all wrinkled up. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, this shit is fucking bagly. No char- no chargers on the front. Right. If you if you get it too fucking uh too big. So you got to be precise with your sizing on yeah. this thing. For me, I tried on a couple different sizes. Now I don't even remember. You went as high as up to a 13. That was way too crazy. That was a but a 12 session. was too tight. So right. I think that's what happened. I needed a 12 you and a half. You need that unicorn size. I did need a 12 and a half. So yeah, if you wear a 12, man, uh I think a 12 it was squeezing the shit out of my foot. When right. I tried them on and I tried on two different pairs at uh at bait yeah. in store and then the 13 was uh way too big yeah well here's the good news so i've been taking sundays and mondays off here the last couple of weeks right yeah. that's fucking up our our situation so these come out the 10th which is thursday i'm back to my thursdays off oh you and i you? you and i now can go hang out we can go fucking check out some shoes we're not going to rush the podcast on thursdays we're going to spend some extra time on the heaters we got all the time in the nice. world. Nice. Ride some good. scooters. Okay? We're going to ride some scooters. Yeah. Fucking get laced. Nice. Okay? Some scooters. I need to get one of those, dude. I got to I gotta get one of those scooters. You're yeah. up. Or at least one of those fucking uh, Amazon. Yeah. Uh, the kits to steal a scooter. Yeah. <laughs> Gadgets. Yeah, that's yeah. real good. I'm fucking going to jail first. Yeah. Just don't just fucking scooter. So, so those come out the 10th. Um, you know, I think that's, that's one to look at out for. Uh, I think... There's a new iteration of the VaporMax. Uh, Is it really? Ways. Yeah. So it's this like... Oh, are they the plus or just the... Oh, VaporMax 2019, 2019 basically. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. new re- iteration on these. Not Nothing too crazy. I saw your boy Fowler got... Uh, did he get a pair? I think those are the plus those. Oh, those okay. Are the, they're, they're so fucking fat and thick. Yeah. I just can't. I just can't do them. For sure. So nothing, nothing heat there. I think the biggest heat comes the 12th you're going to see the adidas night joggers which we've talked about uh you know a few weeks ago yep. on the cast i'm not a big fan it's kind of a new version of the aniki or the i5 923s um <laughs> just a new iteration of that <laughs> what uh, a funny name yeah and then uh obviously on the 12th you have the fear of god one in the light bone colorway so you have the the on court and the off court joints and remember so they retail on them shits yeah so retailing at 350 and 400 so i'm gonna be on those uh i i've kind of waited for this light bone colorway uh versus the black and i told you i was gonna get maybe even multiple pairs but i love this light bone colorway of the fear of gods but man i've heard so much bullshit on them with the zippers what do you mean i'm hearing the zippers are breaking on no. a lot of these. Yeah. On dog. the black pairs? Yeah, on the black really? pairs. Yeah. People are getting the zipper caught, zipper breaking, zipper coming out of the uh off off track. Oh shit. All kinds of issues with the zipper. Yeah. Uh oh. And I'm hearing glue stains. Glue stains. Really? Central. And this is a high in high fashion brand. Mo- and a three hundred and fifty dollar fucking model, dude. Yeah, dog. So this is high in fashion and you got glue stains, you got fucked up zippers. Right. I'm a little worried. Uh one thing I would check too, I don't know. If I don't know if they're even getting stock, but I do. I did notice that Neiman Marcus sells Fear of God. They do. So, so, are does, they, so does Pac Sun. Yeah, but are but they, they get getting? Shit. Do you think Neiman Marcus, being a high end boutique, would mm-hmm. they stock this three hundred fifty dollars shoe? I feel like it would be their market. Them or even Barney's, but yeah, I believe they could probably have that. But the performance thing kind of the performance, yeah, 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 kind of yeah. screws with me a little bit. But I mean, How, if if they're carrying Y three, why wouldn't they? Right, you could, they that'd be cool these? if you'd walk in locally. Kind yeah. of into a Neiman Marcus in your area. Maybe Too bad it's we don't have on one. Sneaks. We do. We do have one at Cherry Creek. Do we? We only have one. Uh, we don't have Saks Fifth Avenue anymore. That shit's gone. Uh, but I Neiman's. One Louis Vuitton store. <laughs> yeah. No, we have two Louis Vuitton stores in Colorado. One's up in uh, Aspen. <laughs> but we do have two. We have one Cherry Creek, one in Aspen. But um, that just kind of tells you how dry it is over here as far thought, as high fashion. We have sure two thought, fucking Louis in the whole state. Yeah. I sure thought the Rocky Mountains would be a lot rockier than this. <laughs> I told, I think I just, dude, I literally was just telling him this the other day. I was telling him about fucking that John Dever quote. Yeah. I don't think he's seen Dumb and Dumber. Or maybe you saw it when he was two. I don't know. He never saw it. Yeah. I was just telling him, Aspen. Look at the fun bags on that hose hound. (laughs) John Uh, Dever lied. That John Denver's full of shit, man. Um, No, but yeah, for real, uh, that would be cool. If you could just, I I would double check with your local. If you got a Neiman's locally, I'd just fucking check. Might check. You never know. You never know if they're stocking them. That's like true. you said, Barney's too. Maybe, um, probably not here in Denver, but maybe in uh, some of your high-end areas, your Neiman's or your Barney's. You what know. if they sell out? Like, What's that? 
Uh, the fear of God. They're going to sell out. What do you mean? So why keep them in... S- what do you mean? Like raffle them off the no, store no, no, or something no. like that? I'm or saying like- on the fucking sneaks. So... The- this may oh. be new to you. When when the OG Yeezys, dude, when Yeezy V1s first released, they were just popping up in some Neiman's, some yeah. Barney's. Barney's. You could just oh. walk in and buy them and nobody knew, dog. They were just kind of on the sneaks. People yeah. were going to actual oh. sneaker stores. And since these were li- uh, high-end luxury fashion stores, they were stocking high-end the high-end yeah. Yeezys. So, because they had Adidas partnerships, certain ones, certain Barney's, certain Neiman's, Mar- Neiman Marcus got... So uh, you just, Yeezys. So I'm saying maybe the fear of gods because they do sell, uh, they do sell the Versace, the two chains joints, mm-hmm. um, Versace joints. They sell you know all the white off white. Stuff. They sell off white shit. So you never know. Yeah. I'm just saying you know if people are interested in this shoe, why not shoot a call down to your your uh, Neiman's and say, hey, you guys gonna get these on Saturday? Are you guys, yeah. I like I said in Denver, I doubt we're getting them because uh, we just barely got off white, dude. Neiman's here didn't sell off white. The first time I saw Off-White and Neiman Marcus was a couple years ago in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe last year, actually, in Vegas. Um, and I was like, damn, I came back here looking for Off-White shit. And they're like, no, we don't have it here at this one. Or not in the Colorado location, blah, right. blah, blah. That's what it is. It's based off of uh, zip code search, demographic, yeah. that yeah. kind of stuff. But now we do search. have it. Yeah. We do have it. Okay, and we'll uh, Check that out. <laughs> yeah, dude. Pretty pretty sick. But I would check that if you guys yeah. are, if you're looking, it's I would just, just like, check, check, check around. It's what? just like when I was out of town, man, found those 1.0 solar yellows inside of a finish line right. of Macy's. Chilling. You yeah. just never know, man. Chilling at a but, fucking Macy's yeah, finish yeah, line. Un- so. Unbelievable. No, Normally no heat on yeah. those. Normally it's a wall full of fucking monarchs, yeah. okay, in those in those yeah. places. Just dad's shoe central. Yeah. You can't yeah. even get a pair of sick Prestos in there. No, no, it's, no. It's fucking Monarchs and Dick Sporting Good knockoffs. Exact, dude. That's, that's a good point. So exactly. All right. Any of those? Uh, any of those shoes? I mean, obviously, I know where you're at with the fear of gods. I think you'd get them if they were at retail just to try them. You'd probably end up right. selling them because they're hard to style. Night joggers, however, uh, you ready nah, for? No, not in. No, nah. not in on those. That's uh, a Dallas. Sh- that's a Dallas neutral shoe. I think right. so. Also, I'm over. I'm not really an Aniki guy, dude. I got rid of per- all my Anikis. I'm just. I have one pair. I have that solar yellow that you actually sold to the homie. Yep. Sold yeah. to homie Brian yeah. over on the East Coast. Not uh, not my style. I do think these look cool, but it just looks like another shoe that I wouldn't wear a ton. Right. And it doesn't. I see it as boost, but it's probably not that comfortable. Let's no. be real. You know it's, what I mean? It's an Aniki with more support, and who knows if that support even makes it feel better. Yeah, doubt it. No doubt. Wait, you're in on those though. I might try them just to just to try them, but uh, I, dude, I'm not gonna go hard for them. I'll probably, you know, if you wait right now on Adidas, if you wait for an Adidas shoe, you know you're gonna get it under retail. That's where I'm at with that shoe. Mm-hmm. I'll get that shoe under retail. By the way, what do you have on feet today? We have the uh, Statics, yeah. Easy Statics. Oh, by the way, I did get uh, cancellation for my from Easy Supply mm-hmm. for my Static. Oh, pair, did you? So I won't be getting those. Gotcha. Uh, which whatever. I'm fine. I would like the reflective pair because I think they'd be better than these. I wasn't super sold on these till I saw them in person, and uh, now they're cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm cool with them. Got the cancellation. What about you? So I've got the uh, the retro 2018 ah. Ultra Boost Cream. So I know you probably haven't like studied the no. the original OG 1.0, but why don't you take a look at those, man? See what you think. What is uh? What's the main differences here? The main difference Break that is down for me. the cream is a little darker. Some of the cream uh, hits on this retro are a little darker than the OG. But to me, the prime knit and the mesh look pretty similar. If you look at that uh, uh, that 1.0 knit in there, dude, it's super wooly mammoth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, look at look at how hairy it is. And I love that. And that was a staple with the cream uh, in the OG. But I think the parts of the cream hits of it are a little bit darker on the retro versus the OG. That's it. But I can't tell enough difference. And I'm not going to pay 280 for the OG, what I can get this two hundred or under retail, right? So. Different different insole too. These got the newer different insole. Yep, still has the Continental sole, which intro, the yeah, OG the had the Continental insole. sole. That the cream, I think, and I may be wrong, but the cream, I think, was one of the first uh, to do one point to do the Continental sole. What did uh, the OG cream? What you didn't ever own the other ones, right? You I know never I own the other creams. Nope. You just got these. Yep. Did you get them uh, just at retail? Uh, I got them uh, ten bucks under retail with a welcome code, a welcome ten okay. code or something like yeah. that. So cool. one ninety versus two hundred, and they're still sitting right now, right around yeah, the same think, price. Yeah, two hundred. I haven't seen I haven't seen these like twenty dollars or more under retail yet. It's not saying that they can't, but they've held pretty strong. I, I figured they would. I don't yeah. think uh, it's not like the fucking Miami those Miami four that were absolutely terrible dog shit. Uh, I mean, no, those are. 
Yeah, awful. I even mean, the, the even worst. the OGs, the retro OGs. That uh, the problem with those. Yeah, is, what was it? What's what's his issue with those? I, I've seen those at twenty dollars under retail, but that's the most. So they've even held strong at that around that one eighty. I've seen them as low as one sixty. But the problem with the new twenty eighteen uh, OGs. Mm-hmm. Blue stains are fucking tragic on really? those. Really, these look great. Yeah, yeah, your pair looks good. Uh, but the the OGs, the even the pair that I sold because it because West NYC that boutique they I, I ordered ten and a half because I always do ten and a half and one point yeah. They gave me a ten, and I even hit up the homie that got the ten and a half. Uh, it's funny, his name is Prince of Boost on on Twitter. He actually got my ten and a half because he ordered the ten. It's fucking weird how small this oh. world is. But uh, glue stain central, so I sold my pair dead stock because uh, it was way way too small, obviously for me, and I haven't rebought the, uh, my correct size yet. Mm, so I gotcha. will eventually. What it, what about the sizing on those creams, the new ones you have on? Ah, uh, ten and a half. So true to size for sure. True to size. Always do your, your same one point so oh a 1.0 size yeah, 1. so i need size. to go half up yeah go half up if, if, that's if i do a 12 i gotta pull the insoles, insoles. on 1.0s yeah. so i still need to go half up on those which is 12 and a half yeah it's a lot of reason i haven't been buying a lot of the newer ultra boosts or the ones they've retroed and shit because it's 12 i need 12 and a half and i'm just not willing to pay the 60 to 80 dollars under re, over retail when a lot of these pairs are under retail in certain areas or right at retail i just can't do it for a 12 and a half i don't need the shoe that bad you know what i mean right. kind of just depends on what it what it is but for me not feeling it um anything more as far as uh releases or anything you're looking forward to i think releases were good um we can talk about uh you don't want those jordan 33s phone no nah, <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah. we can talk about I got uh one pair that might release january 12th the collab with adidas and madness the Ultra Boost 4.0. I've seen that the paint, the paint drip ones. The, so you've yeah, got the black, splatter. black with the white paint splatter all over yeah. them. Yeah, and I like those, man. But again, I'm not jumping out the door nah. for those. But it's so neutral. I could wear it to work. I could, you know, I could. You could get away. You could, it's easy to style, and it's got that suede heel cup. Yeah, you see that? No, the suede it's heel cup sick. on it looks real fucking fire. Hmm. So. I might be into that, but oh, again, yeah, yeah. it's Leather Adidas, case. and I think it'll be easy to get. Maybe not on release day, but you know, a couple days later. I think, it, man, if you just wait, is that for sure coming out on the twelfth, or is it rumored? Um, I haven't seen. The I haven't 12th. seen the I official. Ha- that's what the article says. It's the twelfth, but I haven't seen it on the calendar though. That's the only thing. So it might be a bit later than. Hmm. What article is this from? Is this from uh, eBay? Hi- <laughs> Is this from uh, sneakerbruise.com? <laughs> oh my gosh. Is this from I wish I was sneaker I wish I was supreme hype.com? No? <laughs> I'm sad supreme season's over.com. <laughs> What'd you do? Which website? Uh hypebeast. Oh, oh hypecheats.com. Hype cheats. All yeah. right. They got the con- contra code. They must know. Cool. Oh my gosh. All right, so check it out. So, I got something. I got to show you, man. Oh, I forgot about that. Got got something uh, from uh, 2 weeks ago, my supreme That's order. That's a medium. No, these are large. Man. Oh, that's right. I need it. I was gonna get XL. You need XL, fool. I'm gonna be mad. Did you put them on yet? No, dude. I saved for the cast. Oh, you haven't even fucking put your hand in them, dude. I just took the fucking bag wow. off, dog. Wow. <laughs> okay. Serious. So these are the Supreme Nike Vapor Jet Skill Gloves, dog, with the Magna Grip techno- Let me technology. See this shit. Give me this Magna shit. Grip. In a size large. Let me see. I'm going to be so mad if these fit me because I was trying to go for an XL and they sold out in three seconds. And this is the black version. Oh, they're not fitting me, dude. No? There's no way. My hand is eating this thing alive. This is like a child's glove. This is child's play right now. No, Chucky. Is this this child's large? Put your... uh, What's going on? Dude, going on, Supreme? Let me see if your hand fits in there. That is a... Uh Uh-oh. That looks like a medium, bro. Uh Uh-oh. But I don't know. I have huge-ass fucking hands, so... Ooh, dude, that collar is is tight. Is it tight on you, too? I was say there's no way I could even get close to stretching my hand in there, dude. And I don't want to fuck your gloves up. Oh yeah, I could rock these. I think they're good. I think they're perfect for you. Let me see. Uh, I could zip rock these. the or button the um, do the velcro on top. Let me see how these are looking. I can't get the velcro all the way, but I wear them shits without the velcro. I think they're good. I'm uh, going DeAndre Hopkins pull, without the velcro. Pull them up oh all the God. way, real quick. Let me put me. Ooh, and see, you're in a weird spot because those look really, really tight. But if you went with an extra large, it'd be too big. They'd be too, yeah. You would be too loose. You'd have too much room. And I almost yeah. feel like I'd rather have it tighter so I could feel the ball better. Because mm-hmm. when I have loose gloves, I feel like I can't, yeah. the ball skipping off the gloves are just, they're not as, yeah. I can't feel the ball as well. Feel how tight. Yeah, they're really tight for sure. Yeah, dude, those are sick though. But uh, man, I like them, dude. Just, just, hey, just wait for the photo later on today. 
Oh, we're gonna have a fire, fire you're thumbnail. Gonna, you're gonna be up in that. Don't even worry. But yeah, man, I like them. I think they're pretty sick. I'm kind of jealous. They match my outfit actually with the black and white. Oh yeah, you'd be wearing been, these all day. They're not gonna fit. <laughs> too bad. Need an extra large. It's too bad. I'd Plus, have you do your whole job with these all day. Well, I tried to go for the red ones too, yeah. which was another <laughs> bad mistake by me. Super sold out quick. Yeah. You uh, you went right for those. Got them. Got them. I shit the bed. You know what? Another thing is shitty about the Supreme website. So, um, I did sell the Supreme boxers. I know, uh, contrary to uh, opinion, people were hitting me up. Oh, everybody just has those being sizes. Why, why are you selling used pairs? Why are you guys getting involved in some shit that doesn't involve you? If you're Especially, not going to buy the boxers, why are you hitting me up to try to criticize care. selling the boxers? Now, I don't want to go on a whole fucking tangent here, but they don't. The boxers were a size large. If you go on Supreme right now, there's no large. There's no large. Larges aren't in stock. You go on StockX. The most uh, or the cheapest you can buy a pack of large four is somewhere between fifty two and fifty five dollars. Plus, you pay thirteen ninety five shipping unless you had a code. I said I sold the whole pack to this man, brand new, for fifty dollars flat, including shipping. Right. He fucking PayPal me fifty bucks. Boom, the shits were there. He already got them. Everything's Gucci. So, what are you guys talking about? What are you criticizing about? Are you guys getting involved in some shits you don't know about? That's what it sounds like to me. Correct me if I'm wrong. But if you're not buying the shit. What are you getting involved for? What What's the point, fellas? You know what I mean? You know, like it just, it doesn't make any sense to me. They all have something to say. Well, especially because like I said, I mean, the shit's sold out in a large, right. but that's not the fucking issue. Fuck the issue. You guys are fine. If you want to get involved in some shit you don't know about, do it. I don't care. I'm just asking why. Uh, number two, here's the real thing. I go to order mine off the Supreme site. Won't let me order them. Says I've already ordered a pair. Never ordered a pair in my life. What? Never. Says I've ordered a pair. Huh. Then my my girl goes, so she's like, I'll just fucking order them for you. Yeah. Because she hasn't ordered a pair. She got my pair for me. Or she got my pack off StockX for yeah. Christmas. She's the one that ordered Yeah. Them. But no, she got them off StockX oh. because you couldn't get large. Ah, that's right. right. And okay. I, I need medium anyway. Sure. Which is nice for me because now I can go cop a medium, I thought. Try to go on there. Says I've already checked out. Won't let me cop the medium. Uh, try to go on there with her on her shit. Um, says the, that's giving her like airs. Card card uh, has to match billing and shipping address have to match the same They're the same it's giving her fucking airs she can't check them out either so I still can't even get the boxers that website is the biggest piece of trash yeah Supreme is the biggest piece of trash that fucking website dude I remember with those markers man remember I couldn't get the red one but I got the black big big ass marker the tagging marker yes so then I tried to go in there because they did a restock on the red and I was there and it's like oh nope you've already ordered one and I what so yeah I couldn't get my red tagging marker see this shit's trash dude. Super what about uh, Kith today came out with their uh, Poetic Justice. Do you, have you ever, did you ever see that movie with Tupac and Janet Jackson? No. So they came out with their, uh, you know, Kith slash Poetic Justice uh, collab. That was that. 160 for that hoodie. Pretty basic. Has Tupac on the front. No big deal. Wasn't really interested. So, you, got? dude, they're literally charging a... That's nuts. They're taxing. $160 for something that you just screen printed an image on the front. This reminds me of like in the early 2000s when everyone was wearing the shirts where it just had the rapper's yeah. face on it. Like it was just, you just wore black tees with, and they just you know screen what it printed reminds the rapper's fucking. Supreme. <laughs> it's yeah. a Supreme move. Right. Kith made a Supreme move today. Super fucking basic, dude. Yeah. Uh, and you know, the hoodie isn't like any out of this world quality. Super, super great quality. No. You know, it's not, it was, I'm saying it's not even like a champion hoodie. Like, it would have been at least more fire if they would have done like with a champion hoodie or something. Yeah, it could have like a tri collab. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Just it, it would have made the hundred and sixty dollar tag better worth it for more for me sure. personally. Um, maybe if I was a big poetic justice fan, I'd be more into it or cop. But no, not for that just seems like something add something to that, the back. Or that something just seems like, like some hip hop street culture <clears throat> kind of stuff that Kith is trying to get into. That Supreme obviously dominates and runs the market on that. So yeah. it seems too close uh, to that and I think I feel like they were just trying to maybe capitalize on some of that if that makes sense but I don't know how about we get into stock X I, I was just gonna say let's go into the stock X convo the changes uh, that was mentioned a couple different times in comments we're gonna go back into the comments from both of the past podcasts because we missed the last one so um, we'll do that here in a minute uh, but let's talk about stock X first fill us in first of all what is the what are the changes mm-hmm and then how is the sneaker community reacting to it? How have you seen? Yeah, you bet. So a recent change on Stock X, uh, they had a court ruling, and this was actually due to a recent Supreme Court decision. Uh, e-commerce businesses such as Stock X are now required to collect state tax from buyers in the following states. Do you have any guesses as to what those states are? No. 
Gotcha. All right. Let me just be clear about it. I'm actually surprised. It's only in certain states, though. Only in certain states so far. So it's going to be a state. To, uh, so what I'm seeing is it's going to be a state to state decision. State, and, man, state and mandated. Sanda- state mandated. And when these states want to be a part of this, they can probably join pretty easy. So uh-huh. I would say enjoy it if you don't and aren't being charged it yet. Enjoy it while so it's So this uh, isn't StockX uh, doing something or this isn't StockX being greedy. Acting out. No. All right, Some so people were that, saying that. Well, that's the perception. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I think... That just comes back to a lot of people not doing their research yeah. and not knowing what the fuck they're talking just about. Just being in their feelings first. Right. Not being logical, just being Guys, like, we got to stop doing that. I feel a certain We've way. We've got to stop doing that. Yeah. It just makes you look so bitch. If I see fools doing that, it just makes yeah. them look so bitch made to me. And it's, it's, I can't get it out of my head. Yeah. If I see your fucking screen name doing bitch made shit, I can't get it out of my head. Right. It's burned. I might meet you and say what's up to you, but in my mind, I'm like, this fool's a bitch. I fucking know this fool. This fool's bitching all the time on Twitter. Yeah. He's fucking crying over everything. He's not doing any research. Don't know what the fuck he's talking about. He's reacting before he's even know, before the shit's even announced. He's reacting to rumors and crying over rumors. The shit they ain't even official. Like if you're doing that, fellas, come on, get out of that game. It's yeah. not fun. No doubt, it's not good. Let's let's do some research. Let's wait for shit to come out. So this is not StockX being greedy. We don't need to shit on StockX for this move. Is that correct? Is that what you're telling me, Dell? That is correct. So th- this is a. Uh, a thing that's mandated by states. Give me the list of states here. How many states are there, first of all? Uh, one, two, three, four, seven. Oh, that's it. Seven states so that's far. That's it. Okay. So now, this is, I, I see that growing, right, obviously, of course. but it's still early. but it's very, very entry-level, you know, early shit, for sure. Okay. So, okay. Uh, states uh, are as follows. Number one, Alabama. Number two, Arizona. Number Alabama. Th- Alabama. You know, uh, what, damn, what movie is that? Is that Forrest Gump? Greenville, Alabama. Alabama. Yeah, for yeah. sure. All right, go ahead. Uh, number three, Connecticut. Number four, Iowa. Number five, Louisiana. Hmm. Number six, Oklahoma. And number seven, Washington. Interesting. Yeah. So those are the states that now, uh, obviously, if and, and it is, I will tell you this. It's not based off of the order. It's based off of where the order is going. Mm. So your shipping information. Gotcha. That's what this tax is based off of. So if you've got shipping information that is going to one of those states, you will be charged whatever state tax uh, that that you that they charge. Gotcha. Makes sense. So what is uh, so the only difference is the tax rate. Correct. That's that's it. Yeah. That's so all it is. so they're the taxed tax across those boards in those states, but those tax rates. So it says, please keep in mind that the amount varies in different U.S. states. Obviously, so if you're being charged, we are simply complying with the laws of and in your state. Mm. That's it. So they weren't complying before. Is that what they're saying, or is this new? This is new. Gotcha. They okay. weren't charging state tax before. Gotcha. They so were just a flat tax essentially. And now, yeah. so these, let's say I live Via in, whatever your state requires. Yeah. yeah. Let's say I live in Oklahoma. Oklahoma, right? That was listed on there. Yep. Okay. So let's say I live in Oklahoma and I buy something off Amazon. Are they taxing me? Is this applying to them as well? Is this applying to any goods you buy online? Are you're now paying the state tax where you weren't before. I'm going to say yes because it's a Supreme Court decision e-commerce businesses interesting so if amazon is wouldn't you say an e-commerce business yeah well, fuck yeah it is so if you live in I'm, I'm really curious so if you live in one of these states if you can comment below like what what it was like before and what it's what it's like, yeah. like now if you've ordered before and after yeah uh I'm like, really what are we curi- talking seven dollars ten dollars fifteen i'm curious to know uh what the percentage is i guess we can look, probably look up the taxes on on uh, e- each, in, state. In each state but i'm curious to see when you go on amazon when you go on StockX, does it show you the normal flat rate price like it did before or does it show you a different price does it show you the tax it, price it shows you all three so it uh. shows the processing fee it shows the and then stock x's fee right so cuz remember right. like i think mine is uh, mine is a total of 9% so you have the stock x fee at 6% the processing fee at 3% and then you'll see below that your state tax fee gotcha Whatever and whatever that is. Only if you're in the state, though, Correct. in the state that taxes. So when we look at when it, when I look at it, it, there's nothing. It's gotcha. just the it's just the stock X and the processing fee. Wild. So yeah, wild. But, stuff. So you have three different fees now. It, I, I kind of I was able to see it. It's just funny because I'm seeing like a, I, I was seeing a lot of oh it's stock X is the end for them. They're fucked. Like how do you feel on that? Obviously, knowing this information, I don't I don't. It's just this is the law, guys. Yeah. It's not that serious. What are you going to do now? Uh, what I, I would say some important notes, uh, again, just to knock some points home. This applies to all purchases made after January 3rd, 2019 at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. So if people are like arguing, well, I didn't have it a couple days ago, whatever. Right. Any purchases made after January 3rd, 
Uh, sales tax will apply based off of your shipping address, like what we just said, not your billing address. So let's yeah. be clear there, uh, which we just talked. Sales tax will apply to all pur- purchases for applicable states, even for current bids that are live and hit later. So again, that's not going to change. Right? I think StockX honestly missed the boat a little bit here. I think they should have, uh, at the beginning of December, yeah. pumped this and said, hey guys, January 3rd, right. laws are changing. Yeah. Uh, we have to change tax laws if you live in these yeah. certain states. They should have been, done a better job of rolling this out to make it uh, to take advantage of that urgency or yeah. to create that urgency, not only for the holiday season, but to get, get your orders in before you're going to pay more if you're in these states. That could have boosted profits for them. I right. think they missed the boat a little bit by just coming out and announcing it right when it was happening, yeah. uh, within a few days leeway. They yeah. didn't really give themselves any ramp-up time. They didn't give the clients any ramp-up time. But I think if they would have done that, it would have resulted in more sales. Right. People would have got in before they would have had to pay more. And I think some people's argument would be like, well, this is just stock X. Stock X is going to have to pay this money to right. those states. Right. Yeah, so right. Don't, think, don't think They're stock not profiting X is more. fucking profiting more off of this. And it's not like we're sponsored by stock X either. Yeah. I'll shit on those fools if they were doing some fuck shit. Don't get me wrong, yeah, but I don't sure. feel like they are. No, I don't think so. I think it's uh, people being loud and that's oftentimes the problem with the internet. The loudest people are oftentimes the people that are most uninformed. The, the most retarded. They're just the most uninformed motherfuckers, yeah. but they're the loudest. So then you, that's the voice you see. That's the voice you hear and that's how you get in. Yeah. That happens in a lot of different areas. You know what I mean? And so you guys just got to make sure we do our research here. It's not stock X being greedy. They're not taking any more money. Right. Uh, it just is what it is, man. It's tax laws and uh, government. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, and, that's, and, you know, to have any more conversation other than that is irrelevant because it's like, well, that Supreme court decision looks like they got to do it. Take it. Yeah. Take that L on the way out. Take that L on the way out. Exactly. Well, let me, let me, uh, let me hit that for you one time. You know, <laughs> no, we got to yeah. take that L on the way out. There you go. There you go. Can't go a show without that. Um, all right. I, before we jump into the YouTube comments here, yeah. I want to talk to you. I want, I want, I forgot to ask you a question to kick off the show. I got in a fucking hole, bro. And what? I very I very rarely get in a hole unless I'm not feeling well. Was Obviously, it down in a hole like shitty. Allison Chains or no? No, uh, no, you no. Were, Actually, I guess I kind of was down in a hole. Yeah. I would say you were down in a hole, not in a hole. Hit me. Let I me was see. in a Netflix hole. And oh, I don't ever get in this shit. That's trouble. I don't ever really get down because I'm, I'm I'm moving, bro. I don't let get distracted too easy. I, I'm fucking moving. When I'm sick or when I'm not high? feeling good, um, I did smoke some weed. Yeah, you my, were neck, high in my neck was fucking me up. Okay. Yep, yep. My neck was fucking me up, and I was just laying there relaxing. I was letting the CBD chill. Dude, I started watching Slobby's World. Have you ever heard of that on no. uh, on Netflix? Damn, bro, it, I'm a big Netflix you would guy. Fucking love this show, bro. Slobby's I don't even know World season one. I don't know how long ago it came out. I'm pretty sure it is a. It was. Um, I think it's a complex networks kind of thing. But have you ever heard of a g- gentleman named Slobby Robbie? You ever heard of that fool? No. Oh, jeez, Dow. Fuck. I'm out the game. All right, so let me let me let me get you up on this. I'm looking it up here. Yeah, uh, go ahead. And I'll put our listeners on some game. If you haven't heard of it, a lot of you probably have. Uh, there's a show called Slobby's World. It's on Netflix. There's a whole season. I think it's 15 or 16 episodes. The first season, at least 12. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many, but dude, it's about this guy Slobby Robbie. He fucking is a dude, Dallas. You would love this guy. This is you, dog. This <laughs> motherfucker is a collector. He collects 80s and 90s vintage clothing, really shoes. So he's got. He's like, it's like, uh, he's got this dope ass shop in Tucson, Arizona. Okay. So it's not even like a super, super hotbed for culture, yeah. but it is because it's right down the block from Arizona University. Ah. So it's right in like this district. That's like the really cool district. Kind of like over here on Broadway, South Broadway is kind of turning into sure. down by the other shop. Yeah. It's kind of like that cool. Like there's all these little hipster fucking restaurants and coffee shops and his shop is there. It's called generation cool. Um, Super sick. The Generation Cool sign is in the Sega fucking logo. It's nice. in the Sega font. You know really? What I mean? It says yeah, Generation totally. Cool. The dude is just outlandish as fuck, wears crazy amounts of chains and jewelry. And he's like, honestly, I just wanted I just want to keep dressing like I did when I was a kid. I just want to do all the shit now as an adult that I did as a kid. I want to play fire. the same fucking video games. I want to okay. wear the same shit. So I'm on the fucking hunt for that. And he's dude, he he has his crew and he has his team and they go out uh every day maybe not him out every day, but people from his team, he has buyers and they're literally just going around town hitting their honey, honey pots, dude, like hitting their spots, markets, different swap meets, swap meets, the Arizona swap meet, the uh, different little fucking consignment shops. They make connections with people that come in the shop that fucking restore shit. There was these dudes, like he has a lot of hats. He's like, dude, hat culture. I didn't know shit about it. I started to get into it. I started to realize, oh, there's the fucking, um, 
There's the shark tooth. There's the fucking splash. There's the from old logo athletic and mm-hmm. starter snapbacks and all this shit. And there's all these different terms for these hats. And then he's like, I found these all these hats that are just fucking pancakes. They're terrible. Well, the vintage the vintage twins, these two dudes that are called the vintage twins, come through and he fucking gives them store credit to restore these hats to show him how and to to it gives him a fucking pile of hats to restore, huh. which is fucking brilliant because yeah. now he's giving him store credit. So he's probably paid a dollar fifty for the shirts that they're gonna get, but he's he's taking store credit for eighty. You know what I mean? He's oh. charging eighty for the fucking shirt in the store, sixty for the vintage shirt in the store that he paid a dollar fifty or two dollars for at the at the uh, arc or whatever. Sure. And now he's using these fools to have him clean the hats and make them new, which he's going to make more profit off of. Yeah. And he's fucking giving them store credit for cleaning it. So he ain't even coming out of the pocket at all, which is so high margin anyway. Right. He's fucking winning. He's rolling, bro. That's the dude tight. is just crushing it over there. Huh. Uh, honestly, I was just like, the shop is so, the shop is fucking sick. The setup is sick. There's an episode where he goes to UN. It's the old UN. Yeah. Uh, when it was filmed. So uh-huh. he goes to Urban Necessities out in Vegas. He chops it up with JC. And dude, he brings JC. He's like, I know JC is not an easy guy to impress. He doesn't get fucking pumped. He's, I mean, what do you buy the guy that has everything? Sure. He fucking has everything. You know what I mean? Like, he's just not an easy guy to impress. But I got something for him. And he fucking comes through with all these sick vintage NBA jerseys in mint condition that he had just gotten from some guy that uh one of his buyers this kid zach met through a connection like he had just been getting little a couple jerseys here and there off of him Mm -hmm. well he fostered a really cool connection they became cool the guy let him into their fuck like into his mother load basically yeah and dude it's a garage full of vintage fucking jerseys wrap tees all kinds of old shit that that are in um like crates Mm -hmm. fully fucking cleaned nice all the shits folded there's cataloged like he has a printout with catalogs on where to find shit this guy was insane robbie's like i never seen anything like this i never seen a fucking haul Mm. like this so they went through all the shit he bought a a bunch of stuff from him bought a bunch of those jerseys then he took a bunch of them to jc dude and some of them still had the tags on them jc was like dude this this shit right here this doesn't happen bro these these this these shirts don't this just this shit just doesn't happen, bro. Like this is fucking goosebump level, bro. Look <laughs> at my arms, and they show, they show his arms, dude. And JC has like goosebumps, really? yeah, from the fucking uh, That's tight. dude. It's it is a super sick show. Uh, like I said, the dude's name Slobby Robbie. His show or his um his shop is called Generation Cool. It makes me want to honestly go to Tucson just to check out the shop. He's got a couple key masters in there. He's got a bunch of kicks. Yeah. He's got he uh he's got a bunch of authentic Louis Vuitton, Gucci, mm. fucking Chanel, and then he has a bunch of bootleg Louis Vuitton and Chanel. He's like, I bet you I got, he's like, I'm a Gucci fanatic. He's like a big Gucci guy, which I am too, being Italian. I fucking love Gucci. So he says, I got the biggest bootleg fucking Gucci collection in the world. I guarantee it. And what bootleg Gucci is, he explains, he's like replica Gucci or fake Gucci is shit that they tried to make that Gucci made. Mm -hmm. Bootleg shit is shit that they never made. It's just like a cool Gucci tee. They use their print. They use their font. They just... They just did something different. They kind of freaked it. You know what I mean? Those, that's what's considered. That stuff is bootleg. They sell chains. They sell, he's like, we're not a high end jewelry store. We don't sell high end fucking jewelry, but we sell, we sell some nice chains, hundred bucks, 150 bucks. They got low different. Um, they took like different pendants. Like there was a Chanel one that they took this dope ass pendant that came on a Chanel bag. They found a dope chain for it. They put it together. Boom. People could come here and get a, get a fit for the night. That's kind of his motto. It's not. Mm. It's kind of like come in here, fucking, you know, drop a couple hundred bucks and get some cool shit, get some vintage shit, get some shit for the night, get some shit that nobody else is going to have. He kind of styles different stuff too. As clients come in, he styles them. He, what are you looking for? Oh, I'm looking for some, some overalls. Oh, fuck. Here's my overall collection. I got all these. I got these. He'll fucking pull them down. He's like, you ever heard of Big Mac? You ever heard of all these overall brands? He knows about all these old fucking eighties and nineties overall brands hmm. i didn't even know there was a ton of brands like big into that outside of dickies right but dude it was just a cool ass show man i know and i thought about you because of the collector you are yeah and robbie is such a fucking collector jc right. is such a collector yeah. so you would love this show bro huh. he has a there's everyone from people you know in the sneaker culture go through his shop to people you have no idea who the fuck they are but they're in the game they're some of his biggest connections they're just kind of silent they're not loud people they're not loud on the internet they just like the like the vintage twins, you know what I mean? They just restore shit and they have their kind of own stuff going. He uh he went into the shop of these other cats that started their own shop, kind of inspired by him. They used to go sell him shit all the time. Yeah. Now they own their own shop. He let they uh he let they let Slobby Robbie come through early to go pick up some shit from them that before they even opened their doors, just to like 
kind of yeah. as a thank you to him for yeah, all the shit sure. he's done and it was super cool man uh i just got lost i didn't get to finish the whole season like i said it's somewhere between 12 and 16 episodes um but i probably knocked out like a good nine did you eight or nine dude yeah, yeah i was i was in that bitch so super cool man super cool show uh slobby robbie slobby's world is what it's called gotcha and, uh, yeah check it out dude on netflix uh if you guys are into that kind of shit vintage clothing it's kind of like a paul can type of shit on steroids you know what yeah. i mean they go to the thrift he's goes to the thrift with his employees he's telling them what to look for he's telling them all the little fucking nuances and what he knows and this dude's knowledgeable i mean you can't just open a store like this and not know what you're doing yeah. dude he knows what the fuck he's doing that's kind of like you what know? sean witherspoon does yeah. as well with all his yeah. round twos yeah Same yeah kind of kind of thing yep. yeah he's a little bit more high end okay i would say robbie's not as high end but robbie is also everything video games 80s 90s video that's games tight. 80s 90s fucking sneaker culture uh clothing culture He's a big into like old school polo, Tommy, hmm. fucking uh, old Harley Davidson tees. If they're yeah. single stitched, you know, he, he knows all the details as far as like, you could tell this one's older because it's fucking single stitch along the sleeve. There's no double stitching. This shit is screen printed on. He's like, that's fucking too new. They were not screen printing on the inside of shirts. They weren't screen printing tags. Everything was fucking sewn and shit. It was all cut and sew back then. He's like, just educating them, dude, and educating you as the viewer. Like, it's pretty, sure. it's pretty fucking sick, dude. That's so, right. Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I would encourage you to check out the show. Uh, but as we move on, let's go. Um, you ready to jump into the YouTube comments here? Let's do it. Yeah. As a collector, you got to, you're, that's your shit, though, Dow. I'm going to check it yeah, out. Yeah, dude, for you're, sure. a, you're a collector. Uh, I'm, I'm pumped right now, but I'm also thinking about how Robin's going to be like, Ugh. oh, no. Uh, you're watching another show on Netflix. We, we haven't hit her with the voice for a little bit. Oh, oh. shit. I forgot. My uh, bad. My bad, Robin. I'm sorry. Do we have to? Dallas inspired me. That was, <laughs> oh, my God. That was his fault. <laughs> Inspirational <laughs> leadership over here. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas. Oh, come on, uh, babe. Please. Uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, man. Start off. We're gonna go back to the uh, first podcast or the last podcast first, and then we'll just kind of bang through these. Um, old farts banging cast again. Keep it one hundred, not percent. Poor JJ having his cause stringers stolen from the washing machine. Time to fuck <laughs> with the fools in your complex, bro, and just sit in the laundry in TTF's Hanes boxers while your washing is on. <laughs> keep it up. <laughs> keep awesome, guys, and looking forward to a bang in twenty nineteen. Uh, I appreciate got no, it. Yeah. I got no problem with that comment. Yeah, it's great. It's it's precise. It's perfect. It's it's a little bit of funny and it's a little bit of positivity. No doubt. Great fuck comment. Classic. I fuck with it. Uh, Dal's reaction when y'all were shitting on the fear of gods. <laughs> Dylan, Dylan, Dylan was priceless. <laughs> that was that was fucking that was super that funny. Was right. Uh, congrats, congrats, sorry, congrats on the Yeezy Supply W site was trash, never got out of line. Great podcast as usual. Well, as you know, as I just mentioned yeah. earlier, my shit got canceled. Site is still trash. Yeah, site is still fucking trash. Verdict is out. Uh, let's see. Uh, Johnny Boost, he had a question about it was playoffs who advances advances to divisional round. We already know, so okay. it's just kind of how it goes. Um, here we go. Supreme boxers are normally in stock and restock regularly. Not the large. We already talked about it. Larger XL. Very, very tough. Don't restock very often. Uh, I just subscribe, bro. Thanks for, fo for the follow on IG as well. Don't me just for kicks. Nice. Uh, dope, ki dope cast. Just stay away from the college football takes. That's because I got murdered. Oh, I, I, that, was, got that was directing me sure. on college football. I, I missed every pick. You nailed every pick. So that's what's great about the cast. You're fucking balancing it out. You're crushing it. I'm shitting the bed. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, at least we got somebody that knows what the fuck they're doing. Um, I love the V2, but this is the first one I've passed on. He's talking about the statics. Mm. I even won the Foot Locker raffle and opted not to pick them up. Uh, there have been so many Yeezys dropping lately. I feel like I'm just buying them just because they're Yeezys. I haven't even had the opportunity to rock the Sesames or Semi Frozen Yellows yet. Mm. Um, just couldn't justify buying another one this soon. On another note, I see the views climbing for the podcast. Keep it up, guys. Happy New Year. Yeah. Appreciate it, Nick. I kind of felt the same, man. I, I told you that. I was yeah. feeling the same about the statics. I did end up picking them up, and I actually do really like them. Yeah. Um, I would have I would have preferred to have the reflective pair, but uh, I'm not going to jump out the window for them. I don't need them that much, but I'm kind of with you, man. I don't know if I'm going to keep all the ones I've copped lately. I might get rid of some of mine. Um, I'm yeah. still debating. Still it's funny. Out of all these pairs, so the Sesames, the, the Frozen Yellows, the Statics... I do like the statics. I'm pretty happy with them because they're a little different, even though they're still the same silhouette. Um, Sesames are my favorite. No doubt. Out of those, yeah. I agree. I see the view uh, view, view count climbing on the podcast as well. More people are listening. More people are checking it out. More people are knowing about it. More people locally, too. I'll, I'll be here on the shop or around whatever, and people come up to me like, oh, hey, man, I love the podcast and stuff. So uh, it's definitely, it's definitely um, 
booming. It's definitely working. Anything, man. It's it's just like anything else requires growth. It's going to take time to get there. It's going to take time to get to where we want to be. It's going to take time to build up sponsorships so we can do this full time, um, all that stuff. But I do want to shout out the uh, the Instagram page. We do have the Instagram page up and popping. Yeah. It's most underrated. If you would shoot us a follow on IG, we're going to be dropping um, different content on there, exclusive content. We'll be doing a lot of unboxings and yeah. stuff on there when we first get sneakers. So uh, Sneak peeks with the stories yeah, of, exactly. of what we're going to cover, things like that. Just keep it cool, man. Exactly. So Dallas will be uh, kind of running that most of the time also. So if you guys want to get in contact with Dallas, if you want to DM him, you have any questions or whatever, he's kind of running that IG as I kind of just run my own page. Um, but most underrated podcast is what it is, right? Bet. Most underrated podcast. Not the. No. Just most underrated podcast. Uh, check it out. It's also most underrated podcast at gmail.com if you guys have questions for us. But yep. any of the DMs, DMs are always open, man. We try to get back to you guys as soon as we can. Uh, let's see. What are your thoughts on high-end watches like Rolex? Have you guys ever thought about pulling the trigger on one? Also, favorite sports of all t- uh, sports movies of all time. Keep up the good work. Peace from Australia. Uh, that one comes in from Thomas. Good name. Uh I think I'll let you go first. I don't really, or I'll let you um, go first on the next one. As far as watches go, mm-hmm. I don't really care too much about high end watches. Yeah, I've never been like a. When I was young, I used to see my uncles and I used to see uh, some Italians. My uncles used to run. Uncles used to run around with with high end fucking watches and rip bracelets and just jewelry and shit. Nothing ever really got me pumped except chains. I was never really a big bracelet guy or a watch guy. Uh, even a ring guy. I was never a huge ring yeah. guy. That fool Robbie, fuck. That slobby Robbie rings out the ass. Fucking, dude, every kind of jewelry. He's just a jewelry freak, dude. He's jeweled up all the time. But um, I've never been into any shit but chains. What about you? Uh, for me, same. Uh, I'm not a big jewelry kind of guy. I love hats. And now that the Apple Watches came out, yeah. now it makes sense for me to wear uh, watches. That being said, if I had a family member, you know, there's a lot of family members that, that, that people have, obviously, that that will uh, put... put uh, what, what am I looking to say? I don't know. Uh, they will... Um, not hold down, but they'll they'll actually give. Oh, their, like their, heirlooms, like yeah, the old heirlooms. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Right. Family heirlooms. Now that's a different thing, but I <laughs> none of my family wears. I do shit have like a uh, I have a pocket watch for my grandpa. That's in my uh, see that's fire. Now yeah, if if my if my pops box. or his grandpa wore Rolexes or Omegas or you know Britlings or whatever, and and it was like a family heirloom. Now that's something a little different. But unfortunately, my my family multiple generations didn't have anything like that. So. I don't need it, but that's the only thing that I would want is like if I had some old family heirlooms, that'd be cool. Yeah, I have a pocket watch. I think it's uh, it's from my great grandpa, and I think it's either from the late 1800s or early 1900s. Mm-hmm. Uh, my cousin and I both got one. He gave us each one, uh, or, or he gave it to my grandma to pass yeah. down to us when we were old enough. Um, I just recently acquired that thing like within the past couple years. That's dope. I got that pocket watch handed down to me. I have it in a safety deposit box. Um, it's pretty sick, dude. It has like it's like an old school. Uh, mine actually has the the front flips open, mm-hmm. so it flips open just like a regular pocket watch. You know, you ch- you would chain it onto your shit and you yeah. pull it out. Boom, it flips open. Uh, the battery's dead, but it does work. And then on the back side, it has like a secret fucking uh, the back kind of twists off, and that's where you can store like cocaine or drugs or wow. whatever you wanted to fucking snuff, whatever you wanted to snore it sure. uh, store in there because they would just do that and snort a little snuff or a lot of back in the day snuff is like tobacco they used to snort yeah, it's like tobacco. A tobacco product yeah yep. which is crazy to me but um, that's kind of that's kind of fire did you get a monocle with that <laughs> no no <laughs> dude you could be the monopoly man dude for next fucking halloween let's go i know i know and i well mine doesn't let's have go. a chain either oh my uh my cousin's has a chain but yeah. his doesn't have the stash pocket in the back and um i don't think his has a flip open Gotcha. So I think I got to choose because I'm older. I chose that one because I liked the stash pocket in the mm-hmm. back. I liked the fucking flip open on the front. Damn. Even though it didn't have a chain, you can replace a chain anytime. Yeah. So I thought that was uh, super so, cool. Oh, that's, you've, you've just inspired me here. So up? I did think of a couple things. So okay. I do have a couple family heirlooms. They're not watches per se, but I'd like to share uh, a pocket knife. My dad used to be a silversmith. So he used to work with silver, uh, you know, and, and do things, right? So he bought a, uh, uh, like, you know, a bunch of those Zippo knives that, you know, where you can actually engrave stuff on it. So it's like a clear canvas. Yeah. Um, and he was an engraver. So he engraved uh, a knife for me, which is pretty cool. And that being said, he also just handed three Christmases ago, he handed down a 357 Magnum oh, uh, shit. gun, which is like a, like a little six shooter, right? Yeah. 
Um, and, uh, he ha- he fully engraved that whole thing, uh, with, with, with his, his own hands, um, and just customized this gun for himself and then handed that down to me about three Christmases ago. So I have those two things. So kind of close to a watch, but family heirlooms Dope. really sick. Yeah. yeah. My uncle has a ton of guns. I think, uh, he doesn't have any kids, so I, I might be getting passed down some guns. Like yeah. he has like a, just, he has a huge gun room, dude, like full of old vintage classic oh, shit. Sweet. He's just a mad collector. So he's got some crazy shit. Speaking of guns, nice. um, favorite sports, uh, sports movies of all time. What about you? Ooh, sports movie of all time. I think you better answer first. Give me a second. Oh, and I'm think. with you on the Apple watch as far as since I, like I said, I've never been a watch guy, but I love the Apple watch. I would never, I would never go back. I've just become so accustomed to it. I've become so used to it. All my notifications right there on the wrist. It's so fucking easy for me. My Twitter, my shit's blowing up constantly. So it's nice to be able to see that. And I have to pull my phone out of my pocket all the time. Yeah. Uh, that's what I've said before. I, I just really love about the Apple watch. Um, as far as favorite sports movies of all time, uh, shit, man, any of the gambling ones. <laughs> I just love, uh, I love, I love gambling. I love the Italian mafia. I love the fucking mob. I love all that shit. Um, so I like two for the money, that Al Pacino joint. I like any given Sunday. Big fan of that one. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, dude, there's some great. I Tom Cruise with the fucking uh, Jerry Maguire. Love Jerry Maguire. Show me the money. Rod Tidwell. Yeah. Oh, dude, don't even get me started on that. Uh, I love Remember the Titans. Oh. Big Remember the Titans fan. Friday Night Lights was awesome. Uh, I can't even give you one. I can't even give you one because I can. As I go, I continue to get uh, more and more varsity blues. Ooh. Oh, bro, home homegirl in the whipped cream bikini. Dog, Billy Tara Bob, Reed. Billy Bob. <laughs> oh, Buke Rally. Yeah, oh, dude, geez, do bro. do your uh, do your coach uh, impre- impersonation. Ours good. to win now. Ours to win now. Bud Kilmer, Markson, get your ass over here, John Markson. Ours to win now. Ours to win now. Ours to win now. Ours to win now. Chomping on the fucking gum like he's Pete uh, Carroll. Totally, oh, totally, dude. Love dude, Bud Kilmer. I, a couple of my favorite ones. I love Remember the Titans for sure. Dude, what do you know about Rudy Rudiger? I know about Rudy. Rudy. I was super young Rudy. when Rudy came out, so it didn't. I don't think it resonated with me the way yeah. it does with other people. Plus, I fucking hate Notre Dame, Michigan fan. So that's for sure. I'm not a big Rudy guy. Yeah, you said we could burn down South Bend last yeah. uh, last episode. Yeah. I think if I'm yeah. correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't even give a shit. Uh, Jeremy McGuire is a good one. Uh, the Rocky series, and I wouldn't say the whole series, but uh, you know, uh, Ivan Drago. I think that's to be Rocky Four, uh, with the Russian. You're gonna kill me. I've never seen one. I need to go you back seen and one watch Rocky? all. No. Oh, I've seen little pieces here and there, but I've never sat down. Dude, I, I told you, I'm the, I'm the no. ADD kid, man. I'm the worst movie guy ever because by the time wow. you got me to sit down to watch a movie, I was fucking running out the door to go play or go annoy somebody. You know what I mean? Or talk. Yeah. I was just always talking. You couldn't shut me up. Uh, you couldn't get me to sit there long enough, especially through an adult movie as a kid. And so as time went on, I just never went back and watched a yeah. lot of those movies. So I'm just a bad movie guy when it comes to um, most movies, even some sports movies slip by me. I'd probably say sports movies is what I've seen the most of, right. but uh, bad, bad yeah. sports, bad sports guy. One of my, or bad movie guy, I'm sorry. One of my other favorites, even though that, I mean, golf is a sport, yeah. but uh, I just love the comedians in it. Caddyshack. Oh, dude, it's another dude. one I need to see. You haven't seen that? I haven't seen Caddyshack. Oh, haven't seen God. Tin Cup. I know oh, that's, a, that's good another too. good one I hear. Yeah. Just bad, dude. Fucking bad on my part. I need to... Uh, I need to stop fucking binge watching the Slobby Robbie shit yeah, on Netflix man. and get on the get into some real culture, dog. Sl- yeah, some for real movie culture, no for doubt. Sake. Major yeah. League, all those love movies those. Are good. Seen those ones? Yep. So yeah, love all Major right. League. Let's move on. I keep going. Uh, let's see. Thought JJ dropped the Verizon CEO name, but he didn't. I'll take that L. Sorry, Dal. Take that L on the way out. There you go. Got him. Boom. Got him. I like that. I like when somebody comes back in here and fucking acknowledges they were wrong. Yeah, it's great. Like, oh yeah, instead of just Sorry going and hiding that. in the corner. <laughs> Yeah, appreciate that. Bruff. That's the homie Bruff. Uh, Hey, boys, you're killing it. I've been with TTF from the start and now the cast. I don't do sports stuff living in Australia, but everything else is straight fire. Appreciate it. Um, Just got the chance to finish listening to the podcast this morning. I was dying listening to the bit about Pena because the dude definitely knows if he won the bet. He's gotten to the point where where we gamble about every little thing at the store all the time thanks to him. That's uh, that's ho ho. He's the uh, he's the uh, other assistant manager oh, at dope. the store. Yeah, that's okay. Ho-Ho. Yep. Uh, on another note, Amanda Nunes came out with everything. What a fight! Jones will always be a bitch in my opinion, and the true champ is my dude DC. Great mm-hmm. podcast. I'm the farthest thing from a sneakerhead or a hype beast, but this podcast has me hooked every week. Keep it up. Uh, keep up the great work. TTF Dallas and JJ. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate oh, it, man. Yeah. Definitely. Um, as long as uh. Every, I loved everything there except for DC. I'm not a DC fan. Yeah. I, I respect <laughs> the guy. I, I respect how good he is. 
he just bores me. I, I don't look forward to it. I don't ever like really look forward to a DC fight unless yeah. I'm looking forward to him getting trying to get his ass kicked. But that yeah. very rarely happens. Mm-hmm. So that annoys me even more. He's, I just, in, he's like uh, George St. Pierre to me. I fucking hated watching that guy fight because he gets you on the ground and then he lays on you for four rounds. It's almost like Khabib. That guy would, if that guy becomes a champ, he's going to be the boring, most boring motherfucker. It's those Unless hardcore, he ends it quickly, hopefully. Yeah. But if those, he lays on him for five rounds, come on. Those hardcore wrestlers, yeah. yeah. They, they, can, they can be pretty tough because they're, they're just... They're they're just going to fucking wear you out. And I get it. They're just trying to win. Yeah. That's the best strategy for them to win totally. the fight. I get it. It's just not my They're style. They're playing their and game. And it bores me. Yeah. yeah no doubt. Uh, in my opinion, the fear of God basketball shoe is better than the aesthetic, better from an aesthetic standpoint. But as far as actually rocking the shoe, the price and the price, I'll take the Skylons. Yeah. So. No, I like it. I agree with that there. Uh, Total Dallas. different shoe, which is hard to compare, but um, for the value and that kind of thing, just for wearability, yeah, man, I wearability for sure. Couldn't Skylons. couldn't, agree, couldn't yeah. argue with that. Uh, Dallas Easy Five Hundreds are comfortable as shit. Have you ever tried them on yeah. or walked around? Uh, just a second, Dal. Jeez, let me finish the guy. Steve, fucking rhinoceros trying rip, foot. Yeah, trying to rip Steve. Steve's face off. Just let me. Let me. I, I know. I know Steve. I know who he is. Yeah. You don't know Steve. I know Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Dal- hey, you know Steve? What's is that? Multiplicity? Is that where that's from? Oh shit! Got him with the multiplicity. Mo- wow, Michael Keaton. Hey Steve. Hey Steve. Hey, what's going on? Steve? Hey, hey, oh Steve. no, I only is it Steve or is it Jeff? Oh Jeff, maybe it's Jeff. No, maybe Jeff. I'm thinking of that weird voice from 22 Jump Street when he's I like, don't know. "My name is Jeff." You also sound like the ca- <laughs> you also sound like the cable guy all of a sudden. I do kind of hey, sound Steve. like the yeah. He, well, no, that's Steve, dude. Is that Steve? He's Steve in in the cable guy. Oh yeah, hey Steven. Steven. <laughs> what, what's going on, Steven? Yeah. I buy this time, you buy next time. I thought we were making scramby eggs. That was making us <laughs> breakfast. That's the fucking cable guy, dude. Yeah. What is 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 his name Steven in that fucking multiplicity? Multiplicity. Now that's gonna bug the now shit I'm out of me. Super confused. We're gonna have oh. to look it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, 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 hey, Steve, uh, uh, hey, Steve, uh, P- he puts a pizza in his yeah, fucking wallet. Pizza in the wallet. Yeah. <laughs> you know what we're talking about? I figured. Yeah. JJ's too busy fucking wearing, uh, wa- wear, uh, washing oh his gosh. onesie. Well, dude, when's the last time you saw Michael Keaton in a dude. movie? My Lord. Well, I haven't seen that. Last movie. time I saw him was watching, re- re- re-watching Batman, the original. Right, right. That's it. Of course. Um, okay, let me finish. Or this. Birdman. Birdman was one of his newest movies. Birdman? Yeah, dude, like... Two years ago? Birdman? Yeah, you have to look it up. I don't man. think it's called Birdman. Uh, it's called Birdman. Go ahead and look it up. Is it Bird Cage? It's Bird. It's, <laughs> is it Bird Box? <laughs> Remember Bird Cage? Yeah. With uh, Robin oh, Williams? Yeah. Oh, fuck. No, I think I do know what you're talking about. Yeah, Birdman. Um, Dallas, the Easy 500s are comfortable as shit. Have you ever tried them on and walked around? Or are you just judging because you don't like how they look? Hmm. LOL. They're on the list for a reason. Uh, would bet it's the most comfortable non-boost Adidas shoe that there is straight up. Next year, Adidas is pushing the 4Ds heavy. That's part of their game plan. Well, they are uh, the Wave Runner is boost, so he's saying it's the most comfortable non-boost shoe. The Wave Runner definitely is boost. Yeah, but isn't he? No, he he's talking about the 500. The 700 is the Wave yeah. Runner. He's talking about the rhinoceros. Oh, oh the rat. Oh, the yeah. rhinoceros. Yeah, yeah. My bad. I'm fucking thinking sevens. Yeah. Because like, were we talking about 500s or were we talking about sevens last time? I don't even. I don't even remember mentioning fives. I don't remember. I think we. Uh, as far I, as our top ten list, you remember mentioning fives, or maybe I'm getting confused because the last podcast. Yeah, I don't remember. Either way, regardless. But sorry, yeah, he's I, talking. I he's up. talking about the rhinoceros <clears throat> feet. Remember, you know, Mueller and I waited in line at bait for That's those. Right, yeah. We brought your pair yeah, yeah, yeah. over here. Of course. Yeah, I think they're god awful. So yeah, I am judging by the way they look, and they weren't comfortable enough for me. I agree. To, I didn't think they. To, were, I wore them for a full day. I didn't yeah. think they were that no, comfortable. To justify that look, the comfort wasn't enough. That's what I would say. I mean, I guess they're the most comfortable non-boost shoe. Not, oh, from Adidas. From Adidas? But the most comfortable non-boost shoe, in my opinion, Presto. But I'm going to be... But if you're talking Adidas. I'm going to be as real as I can with you. I haven't even bought... I don't even... That's the only non-boost shoe I've bought from Adidas. I don't think I bought anything the without boost. Other than that shoe. Yeah. So I can't, I, yeah. I can't, even, uh, I can't yeah. even argue there because I don't own anything else. I don't oh, know. wait, I do. I have the... Uh, Shit! What's that? What's that old man shoe? Remember that that I wore uh, um, for the, the fan? Your the final, Goku's. The, <laughs> yeah, the, the, not the Goku's. The fucking uh, what, are, what are those called? I don't even remember what they're called now. The, they're uh, so the young ones. The young ones. Yeah, yeah. Young I have ones. a pair of young ones. They're they, I don't know. They're, the young ones are probably just as comfy as the fucking desert rats. Right. I don't know. Uh, some podcast merch would be dope. With the fire emoji. Yep, we talked about it. We're working on it. Uh, Thomas, I'm glad you mentioned the Apple Watch. I was actually gifted one, but returned it, not thinking it would be my thing. I'm curious how you like yours. I'm actually curious to hear about any new tech that you guys have come across in the future, by the way. I think we do uh, We do talk quite a bit about the tech and what we're up on and what we're trying and any new things. Um, as I just mentioned, man, I love the Apple Watch. I think it's... Uh, 
I think it's the greatest thing for me because of the notifications. That's yeah. the main thing I use it for is notifications. I'm not a big gym guy. I do track my runs and stuff with it when I go for a run. Uh, it does help there, but um, I don't use the heart monitor a ton or a lot of the other features a ton, mm-hmm. but I do use the walkie-talkie here and there, which is actually pretty dope. I can just yeah. walk like Why don't you walkie-talkie old school Nextel here and there. Hit me I up. don't know if you're on the fucking sales floor all busy and shit. Who cares? But uh, So I like that. I walkie-talkie on it, and I, uh, I get all my notifications on it. And I use it occasionally when I forget my phone. Mm-hmm. You know, if I go out somewhere, I can. I have the Series Three, so it has cellular built in. I can yep. call people from it. If I forget my phone, if I'm not around my phone, that's super helpful too. Yep. Um, that's my favorite thing is the cellular aspect uh, to the Series Three and the Four. I I love the cellular. Just being able to not have one device but have another device as as a backup. I think it's great. Uh, another dope podcast, my guys. I couldn't believe that one of my favorite YouTubers made a perfect podcast of mixing sneakers, sports, and relevant news. Really love it and have two things that will hopefully make it into the next one. TTF, why didn't you put white over the green stripes on your Miami Mi Adidas? Think that would have been hell of fire. Uh, so here, I'll answer that first. Um, what, oh, under the, is he talking about under the, over the green? Uh, the ones you made. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He's talking about over the green stripes. Um, TTF. Why yeah, didn't you on the, put on the cage over the green what stripes? What color did you do? Green. I think I put green stripes. Yeah, so I think he's talking white stripes instead of green. So you have the green cage, but then the white stripes, the three. What color are my stripes? Orange. Are Aren't they? they? I don't even remember now. I don't remember either. I think I your heel cup's I orange. Think the cage is orange. I think your face is orange. Looking like Wonka. Wow. Looking like an Oompa Loompa. Got him. JJ. Looking like Trump. Welcome back. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> uh, I just say your face after everything. Um, all right, so there we go. I got the thumbnail. I was looking for the thumbnail a couple weeks ago. It's a it's an orange cage, okay? So you got an orange cage and they got green gotcha. stripes. The reason I did green stripes, I thought the green stripes accented nicely with the green prime knit, prime knit. and then the green laces. I thought the stripes accented green. Mm-hmm. I Honestly, I didn't even want to do the white heel cup. The only reason I did the white heel cup is because that was the, it was the only options. It was either white or it was a... Uh, like an iridescent, yeah, you can't do or that. the gold, and it didn't, it didn't really match no. the Miami theme. So I did white strictly because of that. If I, if it was my choice, I would have done red heel cup. I'm sorry, <laughs> red heel cup, orange heel cup with the orange cage, and then I would have made the stripes either white or green there. Mm-hmm. That would have maybe made it look better. But I didn't. It was, it would have been too much white, man. The white heel cup, then you have the orange cage, and then white stripes on there with the white boost mm. with the white outsole. Would have been a lot of white. I liked the stripes being green. That would have been uh, a lot. That would have been a lot of white stripes. No Jack right. White. Yeah, exactly. Got him. Exactly. Ha- a nice setup there. Thanks, Dow. I thought your favorite pair of the year was the all black off white Presto. What happened? I forgot about it. That is. <laughs> that is. That is. That is uh, <laughs> argu- ar- arguably. <laughs> Arguably so, our listeners oh, so our listeners are so tuned in. At least some of them. Uh, oh, that, I know, that, dude. They're I'll, so fucking, fucking notes, man. I will take so that. I will in. take that L because take that, that L on the way out. So, I don't want to give too much away, but franchise and I have uh, have a guy uh, doing some doing some doodles drawings for us and uh, some caricatures. Oh, they know. Even. They know. Okay. I, well, actually, I don't think they know. But the homie Scruff got. He works with yeah. Teddy. He's uh, he's hooking us up with some fucking. Some shit, and uh, I chose actually because I could we could choose whatever shoes franchise and I wanted um, on our on our characters. Of course, I chose the uh, black off white Prestos. Mm-hmm. So that is my bad for not remembering that that is probably top one or two shoes uh, of the year for me. Absolutely, you're definitely correct. I'll take that L on the way out. And then the end of his comment: Keep up the amazing work, fellas. I hope you and your families have an amazing rest of the holidays, especially Dow with the love tank. Thanks. Cool. Appreciate hey, it. The love tank's been well, man. Uh, we're on our third counseling appointment now, uh, making some progress, man. Uh, let's see. Great podcast. I listened to this John like ten times. Nicholas, he's always fucking with us. Heavy. Appreciate nice. it. Uh, let's see. Happy New Year, guys. Here's to a successful 2019. Um, what announced slash rumored sneaker are you most looking forward to? For me, it's the Fragment Black Toe Jordan 1 if it does release. Take it easy, Al. Bread 4. Bread 4. Yeah. That's for me. I know that's your, like, I think that's one of your favorite shoes all the time of yeah. all time. You own the suit shoe still sitting dead stock, I think, from the last release. I do not. Yeah, the 2012 version. Yep, I do not. So uh, I'm looking forward to the Bread 4. That's yeah. going to be the one for me. The uh, the bread four and that uh, what is it the Z the ZX four thousand uh, with the boost 
Oh yeah, yeah. The, the future craft mm-hmm. that yeah, that's that and the bread four. Yeah, I even I don't even mind the infrared sixes. It's not a comfy shoe, but I am looking forward to seeing the Nike Air on the back, and I'm hoping they use the Varsity Red versus the infrared. Right. Okay. On the last um, version, the 2011 version, it was infrared. Yep. Yeah. Those those are my top three so far. Uh, let's see. Yo, you guys should start a 12-team league next year for fantasy, specifically for the homies that follow the pod. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you would have to figure out a way to pick 12 people, but I think it would be super dope. Maybe first come, first serve type of deal. Keep up the great work, fellas. That comes from Jeff Fortuna. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jeff's taken down the DraftKings tournament, I think, two or three times. So uh, big shout out to Jeff. I I like the idea. Yeah, that would be kind of tough. We would have to do almost like a raffle system. Um, But I'm I'm already in six leagues. Dal's already in six leagues. Fuck it. Might as well make it an L-way. We should just, uh, <laughs> next year, just both do seven. It's fine. Yeah. Um, Not a Kaepernick. No. Well, I honestly, uh, I, it, is, it is a good idea, and I'll think about it, I think, as the as football season uh, approaches next year. It's a little bit too far away for me to say yes or no now. I want to see what the podcast is doing. I want to see what the audience is looking like. I want to see the uh, direction we're going and stuff yeah. uh, at that time. I may have to drop one of my leagues anyways because it was so fucking hard to get paid. <laughs> right. That was fucking <laughs> nonsense. Fucking Danko's league. Yeah, that was, that uh, but was. but we are all paid out now. It's good, but it took it took a lot. Um, Thomas, you need to make pickup vlogs and sneaker reviews. Podcast is cool, but your reviews are the shit. I get it. I get a lot of people hit me up saying that. I might go back to just dropping maybe reviews. If I could just get into strictly sneaker reviews without the long intros and without the vlog style format, mm-hmm. it would be a lot easier for me, and I could just bang those out like Seth Fowler does. You know what I mean? It doesn't yeah. take a lot of fucking skill or a lot of. Uh, I mean, I don't want to say take skill, but it doesn't take as much time to do that. You know what I mean? Um, For me, obviously, working a job, doing the podcast, it's harder to do the full vlogs. Uh, Right right now in my life, it's impossible. I don't have the time to do the full vlogs. Uh, Back to sneaker reviews. Thought about it. Talked about it with a lot of people. A lot of people say they miss them. Really want to get into um, dropping some some of those and some real versus fakes this year. I want to get back into kind of doing sneaker YouTube just when I can and when I want to. Not on any kind of schedule. Not on any kind of uh, just... Uh, not in any regimen, just whenever I pick up a sneaker, if I think it's cool, let's take a look at it. Let's mm-hmm. show you it on feet, maybe tell you what I think on it, tell you what I think, how to style it, and uh, go from there. I don't think that would be too much for me. I think I could m- manage to fit that in and get it going. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna try to do that this year, man. You guys got my word on that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really try hard to get back into that and do as much as I can with that. Um, let's see. Another tight ass podcast, fellas. Your homie from Seattle, home of the Twelves. Keep up the grind and happy New Year. Appreciate it, bro. Uh, have you seen the SB Dunk High Reese Forbes denim? Have you seen that shoe, Dallas? Mm-mm. Me either. Let's look it up real quick. I'll read the rest of the comment. Uh, SB High Reese Forbes denim. That's what you want to look up. Um, yeah, let me show me that, JJ. Once you look it up, you can uh, you can see the obvious inspiration from Levi's with the similar details of the Air Jordan Four Levi's. I like the different tones of the blue denim, the red detailing, combined with a similar styling of the Levi's 4 with a silhouette of the SB Dunks like an Air Jordan 1. Not much resale price hike to worry about. I think it's a win-win-win all around. I love my pair and don't even think about the actual Levi's 4 since I have the SB light, uh, SB high silhouette. Uh, yeah, dude. Actually, he, Dow just pulled up a photo on Stadium Goods. I think... the. Um, I'm not in love with it, but they're they're pretty sick. Yeah. I mean, I'm not uh, I'm not going crazy. What is resale on those? It looks like 119 uh, in some sizes. But resale? Yeah. But if you Jesus. look, let's see, in your size, 12, uh, nothing on Stadium Goods right now. Stock X. Nine. Stock X, I have it 199, but who knows what size that is. Let's see here. They have a low version too. I saw. Yeah. I hate the low uh, version, I, but. dude. I, I say no yeah. to lows. <laughs> no way no to lows bro no to lows um yeah actually i'd have to see them on feet all the photos i'm seeing are not on feet let me see if i can find one on feet i think they're actually uh pretty dope though the levi's what was these called levi's dunk high reese forbes denim i don't know if, i don't even know about those those are pretty sick though uh i'd i'd fuck with them oh here here we go here's one on feet shot pretty dope um do they come with extra laces does it say do you guys know? I don't like the blue, the dark navy laces. Uh, if they have with, a red. It comes with white. Ah, oh, fuck. I'd lace swap them and put a red. I think they'd be dope. Especially to match the red bottom. Ooh, that'd be sweet. Yeah. I think that'd be that'd be pretty cool. The lows would not be sweet. Those are dope, though. I appreciate the uh, 
I appreciate you looking out, man. Put me on some shit. I, I didn't. I didn't even know uh, those exist. I knew they have those older Levi's Jordan ones that dropped like a while back. I don't even know how many years ago, but I didn't know about the dunks. Uh, pretty sick. All right, hella salty. I didn't get a chance to sit in on the podcast. Visited you guys in Denver from Chicago three weeks ago, but landed Thursday afternoon. Listen all the time from Chicago. Big fan since way before the house fire. Keep it up, bro. We are on the same career path, and you're out here making big moves. Appreciate it, Noe. Nice. Uh, the homie from Chicago checking in. What up, homies? Hope y'all had a good New Year's Eve. Looking forward to the growth of the podcast in 2019. Last week, my man with JJ was taking L's the whole first half of the show, <laughs> sending him some Russell Brand socks to cheer him up. <laughs> That's Damn, funny. I actually, I'll, I'll take I actually brought some, man. They're in my trunk. I was going to bring them to JJ. I've got them in the trunk oh for you, JJ. Oh, my gosh. I'm good. I, I got you it. some Russell Brand socks. Up. I fucked up. I get it. But please, <laughs> I, will, I don't want those socks, man. You Buy need it. Yeah, Russell Brand socks. You, you need them. Need them. Your, shit, your laundry just got stolen. Now you're going to be picky? That's yeah. fine. No, I, wow. got, I got a That's bunch of socks. That's fine. I got a bunch of shit for Christmas, man. Like, I'm good. Take that L on the way out. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let, me, let me finish. This is a funny comment. Um, TTF, I'll buy those Supreme underwear for you or from you. But... Uh, you need to try on every pair and leave some TTF pubes. Fucking sick. Brotherly love kicks coming through with the fucking heat. Sorry, dog. They're already sold, as you as you know. Uh, yeah, the YouTube comments are tough when we're buying shit. Just DM me if you want to be. It's first come, first serve. I know you're fucking around. But also, since I'm in Philly, um, I will cop that free trip for you. Sounds super legit. I think that shit's expired now. I think it had to be done by the end of the year. But anyway, um, that sounds legit. Uh, for a hookup on the dope ass certified hoodie, but seriously, I need help with the home. I um, I need that help. The homie out black on black. Dow, I will probably be showing his BYW. Dow will probably be showing his BYW on the podcast, and I have to agree with him since the BYW level one and the BYX. I love both, but the BYW or uh, is it BYW? Yeah, BYW is super comfortable for a basketball shoe, and the upper is even better. Keep up the great job. TTF, let me know if you got the Pink Miracle in yet. I need to God, I need to reach out to those cats, man. Pink Miracle, I need to holler at those fools. Um, the So, yeah, we, we talked about the BYWs. We talked about the level ones versus the level twos. You gave your take on all that stuff. Uh, from GoldenEye, Dal, yeah, that was me that replied to the bitch boy. Uh, that replied to the bitch boy who wrote the most overrated podcast. I told that little fucker, fuck you, you fucking fuck. And my comment got deleted. <laughs> and my comment got deleted. <laughs> I thought franchise deleted my comment because it was too much. Pumping out another podcast during the holidays with both of you guys being sick. Respect the grind. That's from GoldenEye. No, I, don't, I definitely don't ever delete that shit. Nah, man, we got to keep it. Yeah, cussing doesn't bother me, especially if you're in here fucking looking out for the show and roasting trolls. Dog, I'm never going to like... That's the coolest fucking thing you could do to me. If you're if you're looking out for the show and not letting people come in here and run amok on our shit, true. Can't can't be any more fucking proud and can't feel any more grateful. Yeah. Uh badass podcast as usual, most underrated podcast will blow up in 2019. Let's do this, fools. That's from the homie Jay Nasty. He always he's always coming through with some good shit. Um let's see. Shout out from uh I think it's Sapan, Saipan. Near Guam, he said, with a fucking laughing emoji. Because you said something about, what did Dallas say about Guam? I totally forgot. <laughs> something about something Guam. Like the di- something was so wide. It was Walking like, from here to Guam or something. Something, like that. something yeah. crazy like that. Yeah, yeah. So we got a listener. He's uh, from near Guam. Nice. Yeezy Mafia was trying to charge 500 for cart reflectives on the statics. I heard there were 48,000 pairs. I heard that too. A lot of people yeah. were saying 5,000. It was like, the there, there was people a, that got them, there's no way there was 5,000. There was a lot more pairs. Yeezy, Yeezy Mafia, all of them just trying to boost the hype. That's it. Eddie Three Stripes, digging the thumbnail for this video. I think it's the one where you were coloring on my frozen yellow. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeezy, been waiting all day for the podcast. Can't wait for y'all to drop some fire merch so I can support. That's from the homie Maddie. And then uh, last one here, rocking a stringer tank top at Planet Fitness right now in honor of the dude JJ. (laughs) Fuck yeah. And then uh, (laughs) right after, (laughs) a little bit later, he said, I got told to put on another shirt after three minutes. <laughs> Fuck those guys, man. Go get it. Yeah, that fool says no lunking in there, man. You can't be lunking, okay? And then the third eye comes through replying to that, and he said, we need some stringer merchandise. I'd rock that in the gym. Fuck yeah. JJ, you going to come out with some stringers? I'm, I want to make some fitness clothes. So JJ, string, spring yeah. stringer. Str- spring string. <laughs> spring string. <laughs> It's hard to say. I, I know it is. Uh, so that wraps up the the comments from the first one. Let me um, go through these other ones really quickly here before you wrap up the show. Uh, let's see. Springs. I know it's so good. Um, all right. So 
Pharrell's are pretty dope. I copped them about a year ago and the joints would have been mad hyped. Mm -hmm. Times change. They're mad tight and a little tough to get on at first. I agree. A little bit tough around the ankle collar to get on, but I didn't feel mad tight once they're on. Once they're on, I didn't feel like my foot was tight. Did you? No, is he talking about is he talking about the BYWX? No, 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 he's talking about Pharrell's. Oh, it's just the Pharrell's. Uh, just like the human race. I think oh. he's talking cuz I had those yeah. on in the uh in the thumbnail matching my Oh, gotcha, yeah. white wrist. A pad. little a little tough, but <clears throat> I mean not now. The BYWX's though, however, Fuck man, you must have a have shoehorn for that. Really? Trust me. Wow. Yeah. You're like well, that's what you said. They really lock in. Oh man. Super locked. Locked. For locked sure. and loaded. Uh, all right, let's go on to next one here. A little bit more time. Uh, so you're saying you don't need three pairs now? Take that L on the way out. <laughs> Take that L on the way out. <laughs> why? Uh, you don't. Why? Yeah. Why don't you need three pairs of those? Of the uh, uh, BYWXs. Yeah. yeah. Or the fear of gods that you won. Uh, the fear of gods. Uh, I would take. I would take multiple pairs of the fear of gods. The and- ones you won. The Skylons. Oh, I would take. Oh, really? I would take a second pair. You weren't here okay. when we did the review and we brought them in here. No, I almost talked I, the boy the franchise into it. The reason I'm asking that is because I fucking watched the review and you just totally trashed the shoe after you were so pissed that we trashed you for it. Mm. Did I trash the Skylons? I don't feel like he I don't trashed. Feel like I trashed okay, them. you didn't trash them. But I was like, super you honest. Were like you. You seem super hyped about it before mm-hmm. you got him, and then when you got him, like his uh, opinion went totally opposite. And then you're like, eh, no. Yeah, they're they're okay. Uh, so they're they're coming out with a light bone colorway to match, obviously the uh, on and off court ones that are coming out. So it's going to be not the not the white, like the super super white eggshell that that are out now. But there's going to be like a little bit more transition. I might I might fuck with those. But will those be any better though? Because I don't know. Just still, like looking at the. That's just too close to white, I feel like. It's just looking at the white, just ugh. But, like, the black was dope with the green sole and everything. Like, like you mean cream sole? Was it green or cream? Cream. Okay, I cream. couldn't tell. Yeah. My bad. So, it's a, it's a cream off-white sole. So, really? um, you know, yeah. the Skyline's cool, man. I, I would like a second pair. Uh, and I even talked your boy franchise into it almost. So, he, he wants to see a pair, try a pair on, that kind of stuff. So we'll I actually see. called a couple stores after the podcast. Did you? Just to see if anyone had them locally. Nobody did. No. Yeah. No one did. Uh, but the BYWXs, I don't don't need three pairs of those. That's for <laughs> sure. They uh, that is a, that is a super super performance model, and I wouldn't get enough out of that shoe. Uh, to obviously to for a two hundred fifty dollar price point, I got them for two twenty, so I got them thirty under retail. But uh, for me, uh, it's 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 a cool shoe to have in your collection. I don't need three, um, and and they're they're hard to wear, hard to style, and it just doesn't make sense. It's the reason why it's a basketball shoe. Yep. Yeah, or a performance shoe, JJ. My bad. Either way, you can you shoe. could you could wear your stringer and, <laughs> and have those joints on. Okay, it's it's for performance. If you want to have sex with those on, you could probably do that too. It's for performance, Dang. JJ. Get locked in. Get your stringer on and do the slide and sling with your boxer. <laughs> Damn, down nice. with the fucking cracks. Do, do it with your slide and sling boxers. Just slide them to the side. Fucking, you know, go slide out. Slide and man. sling boxers. <laughs> <laughs> the Airbnb story is hilarious. Sorry about that, bro. Don't let it keep you from doing Airbnbs. Not all of them are trash. So, uh, yeah, that was just referring to my neck being fucked up, which is the CBD. Shout out to Pure Spectrum for the Bring help on that. Bring your own bed next time. <laughs> Bring your own bed. I, I, if I would have brought my pillow, it would have been fine. I'm serious. I, the yeah. bed was lumpy as fuck, but yeah. it wouldn't have bothered me as much. The, the pi- If you're on a lumpy bed with a shitty pillow, it's, yeah. it's awful. Dude. You know what? I got the perfect idea for you. Something better what? than the bed in this case. Won't work every time. Okay. How, about, how about I give you my Supreme Yoga mat anytime you go to an Airbnb because it'd probably be more comfortable sleeping on that than a fucking hard-ass bed. I'm down. I like it. Next time. Yep, I'm in. Next time. Uh, Is it really that comfortable? No, the bed was really uncomfortable. Yeah. How about that? That's no. the whole point. The Supreme mat would no be shit. more comfortable, yeah. and that's I bad. Heard, but like, that's what it is, JJ. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sounds Got him. Uh, let's see. Opinion on StockX charging sales tax. We went over all that stuff already. Mm-hmm. Uh, the homie. You guys look like wannabe thugs. The <laughs> laughing face. Yeah. Uh, in that photo, we were doing like the cholo pose. We were like fucking oh, we lean, were. lean down in the cholo pose. Honestly, Thumbnails are the bane of my fucking existence on this podcast. So thumbnails are, we're, li- listen, we're doing two podcasts a week and we're supposed to take a different thumbnail every fucking yeah. week. Especially. I have no idea. If you guys have, uh, if you guys have advice on what to do each week, because <laughs> yeah. honestly, we're literally trying to find, take different photos every week, different shit. I mean, it's just, it's going to become, it already is becoming really difficult and it's going to only get worse. 
and I don't know what to do. Especially with such a small area to fucking work Right, with. yeah. It's not like we're going to drive a bunch of distance to try to get new fucking areas every right. time for the thumbnail. You got to work afterward. Like, it's just... Yeah. It's a lot, dude. Thumbnails are trash. Um, no way they double up on those fights. They're just too big. Both huge pay-per-view and gates on their own. I totally agree. I yeah. was just saying that would be absolutely insane. Just with one of the fights, if you wanted to fuck over boxing, just yeah. put one of those fights on May 4th. Yeah. If you wanted to really kill boxing, double put both up. of those fights. Yeah, yeah that, that's it. all I was saying. Yeah. I, I realized, yeah. We're just we're just trying to help uh, our audience uh, give dick punches no to, to, uh, to Golden Boy. Is that what it was? <laughs> Golden yeah. Boy Promotions? Yeah. <laughs> that's what Jay, that one's from Jay Nasty. He also says, yeah. I won't miss another DK, dude. I've been out the past two weeks, not to mention uh, I'm the one that requested, or I'm one of the people that requested two tourneys. My bad, homie. It's all good. We yeah. filled it up. We talked totally. about the uh, DraftKings. We got it all cracking. Um, so it's been awesome. Let's see. Haven't had a bad experience with Airbnb, knock on wood, but some are better than others. I probably spend way more time than I should looking through reviews and the area to make sure everything's legit beforehand. I probably should spend a lot more time doing that because yeah. I didn't do much of that at all. I, I saw it had good reviews, and I didn't, but I didn't really like, read through them. Um, at least it wasn't, I don't know. I mean, at least the place wasn't fucking dirty or nasty or yeah. whatever. Could have been worse. Could have been worse. Um McGregor and Khabib both have to go before the athletic commission before they can fight again. Dana said they would have a rematch in 2019 though. I totally forgot about that when we were talking about the, uh, the suspensions and stuff, or when we were talking about the fights and stuff. I, ter- I forgot that they had to still do that and they had yeah. the suspensions and it would be a lot more work to just throw that out. Uh, Dow Netflix and chill at the age of 10. <laughs> <laughs> what is he referring to? I don't even know what that means. So remember when we were, uh, when we were talking about Netflix and the whole bird box thing and all of that. And then I was like, well, I only knew, uh, Netflix, uh, to, to watch movies. I was talking about watching movies and then you having sex, mm. you know, but you were like, you talking about the come up of Netflix and chill. And then we got into Netflix and chill. And I was like, somehow there was an age discrepancy. You're like, how old were you when you were fucking, you know, Netflix and chilling? And that's what it was. So, yeah. Right. I forgot about that. I'm sorry. Um, so no, not at 10. Happy new year crew. Good to see another podcast. Uh, appreciate it, Andrew. I'll be honest. I didn't enter the DraftKings tournament cause I felt frustrating or, um, sorry, I'm, I'm chewing up fruit. I'll be honest. I did not enter the DraftKings cause I frustratingly lost my finals match after a very long fantasy year. I finally had enough, uh, enough fantasy football. I'm sure there are other people in the same boat. I totally agree. I think that's the point. People got into championships. They got more important shit going on. You're trying to win big money in your championship. Um, Got distracted. I get it. I get it. You had the kind of the same thing, even though you still did it. You had nothing going on on Thanksgiving, but you didn't enter that one. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) That's how it goes is what it is. Um, Dow, did you add the BYW to the collection uh, for the looks or... Sorry, let me, let me start this over. Dow, you want to add the BYW to the collection for the looks, but the Blister 1.0s, which you thought you liked more, already hit the GOAT account? Yep, 100%. <laughs> yep, I got <laughs> I got nothing else for you. Hell yeah, they did. Sorry, I almost spit out my fruit laughing. Yeah. That was a nice response, Dallas. Yeah, yep. BY, BYWs, no fucking blisters. The blister joints, blisters for days. Uh, for everybody in 2019... Find your authentic self. Talk to your higher power and love everybody from Tyler. Hey, I like that positivity, yeah. Tyler. I wonder if Tyler's about your, uh, I wonder if he's going to take advantage of the CBD and or the new burgers that we talked about. Or, he should. Yeah. Everyone should. I don't know why you wouldn't. I'm not fucking over here lying to you guys. This guy's positive. I like it. Yeah, I like the positivity. Uh, never used Airbnb. Maybe it wasn't someone's actual house. Maybe it was just a place that the Airbnb specifically bought for renting out and they didn't spend any money on the beds and shit because no one would ever, because no one would be able to live there normally. So I don't think that's the case. I don't know that people buy houses um, of that size to specifically rent out for Airbnb. I know people do buy houses to rent out for Airbnb, but not that size, man. This thing was fucking ginormous. This was a mansion, bro. Mm -hmm. And we had the whole basement or bottom level. It had a private entrance. You could just roll up, walk right in. But there were people upstairs. We couldn't hear them or anything, but I know that someone lived in the upstairs of that house. Uh, I'm not sure if they were gone or on vacation, but they said specifically, Hey, don't park up in the front. We use are up in the uh, top area. We use that all the time. You can park down in the bottom, block the stairs. We never use those stairs. That's fine. So I know it was a place that they, uh, 
made and and there was all their own stuff in there. If it was a house that was rented out specifically for Airbnb, there wouldn't be cycling posters on the wall, autographed saying to Kelly, best of luck, blah 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 blah. Yeah. This motherfucker's in there clanging. You know, we have a whole gym in there, weights clanging and banging, ready to go. I mean, it, all that wouldn't have been there. I, I doubt uh, it would have been anything like that, but. No, they're just shitty fucking bets, dude. They totally. just need to up their shit. Uh, love the podcast, boys. And to wrap it up, Eagles. Eagles. And that was before they got the dub. Mm. Even more of a fan. I know we got a, we got a lot of East Coast cats. We got a lot of cats from PA listening yeah. uh, to the podcast that fuck with the channel. So um, a lot of big Eagles fans probably geeked on the big win for uh, Big Nick Nick. Big Nick Dick. Big Dick Nick. Big Dick Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit it was almost like it was on purpose i'll just go ahead and take that l on the way out <laughs> all right uh anything more dal anything you want to uh wrap up with here at the, as we uh finish out the podcast no like you said man next uh next podcast on uh on friday we'll just get more into what happened with the college bowl we'll kind of rehash you you know yeah, what, yeah, yeah. Our, we'll, our we can thoughts. kind of break yeah. that down see what happened with the college football national yeah. championship also um we'll go into the wild card weekend kind of break down those games give you our heaters and then there will be two DraftKings tournaments again those things will be live on uh friday when the podcast airs mm-hmm. so make sure you click into the description and get your get your lineups in um, I'm going to be sending out the end invite again to everyone in the DraftKings um, league, which there's close to like 50 people or 50 people in that league. Uh, there's only 20 spots in each day, Saturday. Uh, there's 20 on Saturday, 20 on Sunday. So if you want in, make sure you get in quick because it looks like they're going to be filling up if Sunday, uh, last Sunday was any indication. Right. So um, cool. I think we can uh, kind of wrap up on that and we can uh, get out of here. Gonna be a fun weekend of football. Super busy week for me, work wise. I know you got a bunch of stuff going on work wise, but uh, as always, man, we'll be back here on Friday and we will see you, fools, Friday.